After my interview with Lance Breitstein and his emphasis on the importance of edge in building a playbook, I decided to host a webinar to show how to build a playbook based on Mike Bellafuri's book, The Playbook, and things that I've learned over the last four years as a trader. For me, hyper-focusing on edge and building a playbook changed my trading career. And if you are struggling, the playbook and the will to survive the learning curve are two things that are extremely important for beginners. I was sitting at dinner with Mike Villafuri and we were with a group. Now Mike has raised seven and eight figure traders. I asked him how traders fell on the desk with all the resources that SMB provides. I'm not sure if you know this or not, but everyone that works on a prop desk doesn't make it. He said, it depends on the individual, on the individual's discipline, their persistence, their willpower. So if we use sports as an analogy, everyone isn't meant to play in the NBA. Professional athletes can provide their children with the best training. And at the end of the day, each person has to persist and put in their hard work to ensure that they have what it takes to be a professional athlete. So some of the best athletes in the world had children that tried to play in the NBA, they didn't make it. So if you're watching this video, you must ask yourself, firstly, am I willing to put in the work and persist and work hard at the craft to gain the skill? Am I willing to persist past the steep learning curve? If you are, then this video is for you. And the process of building a playbook with Edge will help point you in the right direction. I hope you enjoy it. All right, so now, uh, the purpose of this webinar, if you, if you watched the recent podcast I had with Lance Breitstein, um, you heard how he um, discussed the importance of edge, right? And my journey as a trader, um, from engineer to trader, I'll tell you just a little bit about it, just a quick five minute uh, blurb about my journey, and then we'll move right into it. But um, to me and the pros, right, they all talk about how uh, how important it is to build a playbook you have set and defined rules, um, especially in the beginning, because you don't have any history. You don't have an intuition built, right? Because you're, you're just starting out. So it's important to, to um, either take someone else's playbook um, and apply it or someone else's strategies and apply them. Uh, it's, it's very important that you do that in the beginning and you have defined rules that you are sticking to uh, that you can measure, right? So this workshop, this webinar is designed to help anyone out there that's um, you know, that's looking to build a playbook or refine uh, the current playbook, okay? All right, so just quick disclaimers, whatever I share here is for informational purposes only. I'm not a financial advisor, okay? All right, so feel free to use the chat. If you have any questions, just drop them in the chat. We're gonna work together. This is a, it's a workshop, right? So um, we're, gonna, we're gonna be, um, you know, moving uh, like, like a class, right? Classroom setting. So it'll be a two-way thing, basically, all right? All right, so now, first thing first, I think traders in the beginning, you have this perpetual fear of failing, right? This perpetual thought of, uh, can I do it? And the fact is, is that you can. I was sitting at dinner with Mike Bellafuri, like he's raised seven and eight figure traders. And I asked him, I said, okay, if traders fail with all these resources that you give them, right? It's like, I'm like, you give them all these resources, risk managers, like um, trading psychologists, et cetera. How do they still fail? He says that, it's the individual, right? It's the individual, their ability to persist, right? Their ability to persist, their interest, their passion, their love for the game, right? That will uh, help them push through the difficult times and help them push through the, the steep learning curve, right? Push beyond that steep learning curve, right? So I've reached a level of, uh, of success and I've, I was asking them, can, you know, ind independent traders without, you know, all of the resources, can they reach success? I was just asking, I'm just picking his brain. I'm at dinner. I'm just asking all these questions, right? This Abdullah, the interviewer. And he said, yes. He said, a person without the resources that with a person without the resources, but with the passion, the courage, the persistence <laughs> can outdo the person with the resources, Right. They can outdo that person, right? So if you're on this call and um, you persist and you look for the best resources of knowledge and learning, uh, you will eventually reach your goal, right? Um, so I just want to reassure you, I've talked to the, I'm trying to bring the, the people from the top, right, to the channel so you can see what it takes, 
right? Now, I quoted this on the webinar. I'm sorry, I quoted this in, an, in the interview. I'm just doing some prep. I'm laying the groundwork, the foundation for the, the webinar. Um, I quoted this quote, interested people watch, obsessed people change the world. You can't be interested and obsessed, okay? Interested is a hobby. Kobe Bryant was not interested in winning championships. He was obsessed. And obsession comes in the small details that nobody pays attention to. So when I, as I began to learn how the pros traded and adopted it, I realized that being a trader, um, it, it calls for us to pay attention to the details. And as we can stack more of the details, more of the things that have edge on top of each other and, 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 um, and combine them, it gives us greater edge, right? So, you know, don't be afraid of getting into the details, right? Writing a one page paper at times, outlining when a certain way, right? Why I went bullish or bearish or why the market's moving neutral, right? Um, the information that you have in the beginning, especially you should write as much as you can um, down, okay? Um, the details are very important. Now, the goal for the webinar is for newer people that are newer to trading, I wanna mention some of the essential things that you need to be successful, okay? So I'm introducing why you need a playbook. For those that are, are more experienced, I'll go into the details of what should be in your playbook as well as how to add new setups, right? When you when you study under a mentor, a lot of times you take their setups and you never really learn the logic of how to build your own. So in this webinar, I'll also, for the more experienced traders, we have different traders here, I'll detail out how to add setups to your playbook, okay? Now, most important thing that I want everybody to take away again, is the only way for you to be successful as a trader is by having edge in the long term. Anyone can be successful for a month or two, right? You can get, you can, you can be fooled by randomness. So you can be in the right place in the right time. And you can pass, you can pass phase one, phase two, and uh, get a payout by being in the right place in the right time. But in order for you to have long-term success, you have to have edge. Okay. You have to have edge. Um, right. And the, and the way to, to build edge and, and to track it is by having a playbook, all right? Now, just a quick introduction, just in case you don't know me, you may know me from YouTube and social media. I worked as an engineer for 12 years. This is me and my brother. My brother here, he's the one that introduced me to trade him. Um, uh, he, he started off with stocks, right? Um, he had success, and then I became a trader because of him. He became, he became an engineer because of me. I became a trader because of him. Okay, so this is me in the office, right? So some of you all are in the office right now, uh, you know, as I mean, like, you know, day to day. Um, and I've transitioned out and, you know, never really imagined being where I am now, right? So what I did is I took the same keys of success. I found the pros like Mike Bella Fury along the way, found the other people like Lance Price Stein, uh, Kulamagi, other people um, along the way so that I can learn how to become a professional trader, just as I studied to become and trained to become a professional engineer, right? Um, and then that led me to, you know, sitting down, being able to sit down with him today. I, I've been watching him for a long time, corresponding with him for a long time. And eventually, I was able to sit down with him and, and bring the podcast to you, right? So, um, you know, from engineer to struggling, 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 getting paid out, um, passing challenges, being, um, being, honored as one of the top performers uh, in, in the industry, being invited on podcasts, et cetera, right? Um, and then taking that knowledge from CFDs to futures, like we're in the futures game, right? So passing challenges, getting payouts in the futures game, right? And then moving on to, to share uh, what I've learned uh, with others and guide others, right? So I have an interview coming out with uh, one of the students. His name is Brandon. He talks about how I introduced that concept of playbook and how he used that to, he gained 50K in payouts just uh, since uh, January this year, right? Um, but he's been trading for um, a good amount of time, uh, but you know, we had an impact. So the power of the playbook is real. The power of, of the playbook is having effect on myself and real people, okay? And it will have an effect on you as well, okay? Now, what are the skills of the consistently profitable trader, right? So this is what we want to become. Um, we want to be able to consistently make money and in order to to make um, uh, in order to make consistent money, uh, I've adopted the term from Mike Bellafuri, the CPT, right, the consistently profitable trader. So if you have a goal, uh, your goal to, should be to be a CPT, consistently profitable trader, meaning that you can make you have green months, right? You make money every month, right? And then you eventually, as you continue to grow, you get to where, like Land said, he said for six years 
he had he had almost no uh, red months, all green, right? The majority of the week he was green, right? And you can get to this point, and I'm going to lead lead you to uh, how how to how to get there uh, in this webinar, right? So the skills are I've broken them into four: having a playbook with edge, right, and being able to identify setups that have edge, um, risk management, um, the psychology that's necessary to show up every day and have discipline, right? And then performance, performing every day, executing every day, live trading every day, doing your analysis every day, doing your um, analysis every week, right? Forming your game plan and sticking to it, right? So that's, there's, there's four, to me, there's four core uh, pillars. And the most important is having a playbook with edge. Now, the four stages, I believe, are, there's a stage before consistency, that may be stage zero or negative one, negative two, uh, however you want to put it. Um, but there's going to be a time when you're losing money, then you're losing money just a little bit, and then you break even. And I, I just remember being at the stage where I was break even, and then you move into um, the stage where you're consistently making money, right? It may just be a little bit at, at first, but if you can get to this stage, all you have to do is start to scale and trade more of those um, setups uh, better, right? This, the setups that, that you can trade or that have you, um, you know, that, that brought you to that consistency level, right? So consistency is the first stage, and that's what we're going to focus on in this particular webinar, okay? Getting to that stage of consistency, then you size up, then you do, you add more setups, add more complexity, okay? All right, so uh, just a quick statement from Lance again. Most failing traders wrongly attribute their struggle to issues of psychology and risk management. The reality is most have zero edge, right? So now, what is edge, okay? They're naively fooled by randomness into thinking their wins are edge. This seduces them to troubleshoot the wrong problem. So most people... Uh, are, you hear influencers talk about how psych, uh, trading is 80% psychology to each his own, but I don't believe this. The reason why is because, and, I'm, and I'll show you in a minute, here's a quick, uh, just uh, another selling point, right? So a lot of people are focusing on um, psychology, risk management, and performance, and they aren't going anywhere. And the reason why they aren't going anywhere is because they don't have true edge in the market, okay? So you can be improving all those things. Uh, you can be improving your psychology. You can be meditating, you can be praying, right? Um, you can be going to a, a trading performance psychologist, uh, but you can be managing your risk very tightly um, and you can do everything correct. But if you don't have any real edge in the, the strategies that you're, you're trading, then you will struggle. You won't go anywhere, okay? So that's what this, this webinar will uh, aim to reinforce. Now, the easiest analogy I can give in, um, is the slot machine versus poker, right? So... Um, I don't actually play slot machines or, or poker, but I think a lot of people can can connect with this. And, I, and I'm explaining it now. I'm going to give you one sentence, though. One sentence. <laughs> uh, but let's say you go into the slot machine in the casino and you pull the lever. Most people won't have any expected outcome, right, from pulling the lever. They think it's maybe 50-50 or even worse, right? They're just expecting to lose money. Maybe they'll win sometimes. Um, but the poker player... If the poker player can get the right hand, right, uh, and get in the right situation and have the right skill of playing that hand and reading other spaces, right, that poker player can make more money because they can have a set of things that line up in their favor. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying not, if you're just, if you don't have setups with edge, if you're just take, taking, you know, uh, random patterns, or, or, or someone taught you a system that doesn't have edge, you may literally just be in the casino. You're just showing up every day and you're just pulling the lever. But the setups that have real edge are like the poker setups where through data uh, you've back tested or found out that they are the right hand to have. And you, I can identify when having that right hand is the right situation, the, mar the right market session, the right time, right? And then you have to be skilled enough to play it. Right. You have to be skilled enough to to play that hand. OK, so that's that's the idea from an analogy standpoint. OK, now here's an example. A lot of people are showing up and trading in this. OK, this is oil, crude oil. The idea here is to be able to differentiate between this type of market. It's hard to trade this versus this aggressive direction. OK, so when you have this choppy movement. It's hard to trade this. 
as easy as it, it may look like it's just, it's easy to trade between two uh, points in a range, but it's hard because you don't know uh, how far price may move outside of uh, that range to take out your stop loss. No matter, I don't care how many supply and demand, order block, fair value gap, like liquidity strategies that you uh, that you use, trying to trade this is extremely difficult, okay? So these are the moments. This is a hand, like if we use the poker analogy, right? The, you're dealt this particular hand. You don't want to play this uh, when you have this particular hand. This is not the hand that you're looking for, okay? You're looking for... I, you want to identify and be able to identify the times when the market are going to move aggressively in one direction. It's hard to make a mistake, be it risk management, psychology, et cetera, when the market is moving so aggressive in one direction. Even if you have a bad entry, you're still going to make money. Okay. So this workshop is, is designed to teach you about the playbook, but also uh, we're going to get into a little bit, probably maybe part two or three as we continue. We'll get into how to identify that the market is going to be moving aggressively in one direction. Does this make sense? Drop a one in the chat if it's making sense so far. So Alhamdulillah. <laughs> That's for my people. Uh, people say, MashaAllah. That means uh, praise be to God. All right, let's go. Let's do it. Now, now, what is edge by definition? Edge by definition, in layman's terms, we'll use that first. We use the layman terms, layman's terms, Okay. So uh, the layman's terms definition is, I have these windows that are blocking my uh, my view. Okay, um, an edge an edge is a strategy that gives you a profit advantage in the market. Okay, so in order to earn a profit over time, it is necessary to use a trading strategy that has a trading edge to help the probabilities tilt in your favor over a series of trades. Okay, now the technical definition is. Um, it is a trade or strategy that has positive expected value. That, so when you hear land say positive expected value, or one of the pros is say positive expected value, um, that means that um, the amount of wins that you make and how much you gain is greater than the amount that you lose, basically, right? So you net positive, okay? So if I take 10 trades, I net $1,000, that, that strategy has edge, okay? If I'm net positive. So- Another visual, just to make it drive the point home again, is let's say I'm taking losses, loss. I have several losses here, right, within in my trading days. But at the end, my uh, my strategy lands me in net positive. I, I'm funded or I get payouts at the end, right? So we want to have strategies that even we're going to take losses. You are going to take losses. We are going to take losses. Um, there are some strategies, like Lance mentioned, there are some strategies where expected value is 90% win rate. Those are more rare, right? Where the, the odd, every, everything is stacking up, the edges are stacking up so strong that you have a 90% win rate. But for those that aren't, and that's not every day, those aren't necessarily the easy money trades. Um, but you want to uh, ensure that your strategy at the end of the um, series of trades, you have positive expected value, okay? Now, here's another visual. So here's here's the thing that a lot of people miss, okay? This is for all my people that's on. If you're in ZTF, I wanna emphasize this point to you, okay? So, you know, I know you've all seen this where if you have, if you win, if this is the, the relationship between the risk to award and win rate. So this is win rate here. With a 20% win rate, one to five R&R, &R, you can be net positive, okay? So if you if you as you move over here um, to thirty percent, forty percent, fifty percent, et cetera, you don't need as you don't need as much R, like you don't need as much return, right, to be positive, right. So fifty percent win rate with a one to two R and R, you can be net positive, right. So you lose half the trades, and you're still net positive, right. Sixty percent you can go one to one, and you'll end net positive, right. But here's the thing. Uh, and this is so it's so funny how the retail space, like online, the social media space, YouTube space, it's so funny how we learn maybe like let's say supply and demand, okay, supply and demand, and that's it, and we base our total trading off of that. Versus the pros, what they're doing, they're constantly stacking different things to help increase the win rate. Okay, 
So they so if we're at 60, they're trying to see how can we get to 70. And there's ways, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you how. Okay. Right. So just all about edge, just talking about edge at this moment, right? So, so the edge here is if you can have 60% win rate and at least a one-to-one -one or one-to-two, then your strategy has edge. But you want to be at a 60%, maybe one-to-three, right? Because psychologically, you'll make more money and you'll you'll win more and you'll you'll make more money when you make money, right? Um, and then there's ways to, to have a higher uh, R&R and a higher win rate, right? As Lance mentioned, like some, some things would be 90%. Uh, win rate and I and I've witnessed it and I'll and I'll explain as I mentioned I'll explain okay so any questions so far it's not entirely true uh which one is not entirely true let's talk about it and make it bigger when you are winning oh you're saying that um you're saying uh if you if you scale in okay maybe drop me a paragraph there Tony let me know which uh what you're thinking okay or maybe we can discuss a little bit more um also not entirely true because you haven't factored in spreads commission fees uh, swap fees. Yeah, but um, let's, we're just, I'm taking it in general, like in general cases, right? Uh, that you, you also do, you you have to um, factor in your uh, spreads, commissions, swaps. If you say something is not, if something is not true, just drop drop in the chat, like what's not true? Because I'm not sure what, uh, what you're talking about, okay? Yeah, class is recorded. This is my this uh this is with only beginners information. I'm not sure what you mean by that one. The law of numbers, you're the man. I feel twenty percent of trades will make the big money. What if you what if you only set stop losses when executing trades? Uh, what do you mean by only setting them when you execute the trades? It's hard to have a one to three for all. Think different trades. So you can target depending on supply and demand zones. Uh, okay. All good, Abdullah. You're killing all, as always. I know your course by heart and always learning to make new things. <laughs> uh, if you hold them and have bigger positions, fees and stuff, that's another subject. If the spreads and commissions make that of a difference, then your edge probably isn't too much good. Yeah, that's what, that's what I was thinking. Like, uh, okay, um, I've struggled to find the assets that are in play for the day. Okay, we'll talk about that. So I'm losing to trade. I'm losing to trade assets that move aggressively in one direction. How do I pick the asset? That's a big topic. Can you go more into detail about how uh, the professionals try to turn? Yes, there we go. That's what we're getting to. How, do, how professionals turn, have a greater win rate, right? Okay. Uh, especially for experience salon, brother, how much back testing is enough for an edge? Sometimes the difference in performance is made in only two weeks out of the quarter. Yep, yeah, that's right. Uh, okay. What software tools do I need to uh, practice futures trading? Uh, so if you, I would recommend you grab an account from Apex, grab a cheap one maybe like $40 uh, for the account and get the trade over account, which you can trade in trading view. You can use trading view um, and just start there. Since if you already use trading view, you can trade right in trading view with the trade over account. And then that's a good one. Okay. All right. How do you get your daily buys? All right. Let's talk about that. So let, let me, I'm gonna keep going and we'll, we'll get, so this is not, this is only part one, right? We'll dive deeper uh, into the workshop uh, more and more. Okay. All right. So, so eventually what happens is uh, you have, you have a playbook, right? And then you, you have setups. So you have different setups, right? For different occasions. You're like one setup is not always going to be in play. Okay. So as you conquer one, then you move on. Like I have I have four different scalp setups that that I trade. Then I have intraday setups that I trade. Then I add I'm adding swing trades <laughs> as well, right? So as you as you get comfortable and you're able to 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 trade some of your setups very well, then you add more. But if you don't have any at all, then you, then I recommend you focus on just getting one or two or or or, or three. That's um you know that's uh that that you can trade very well. Is it true that you need twenty five thousand accounts to trade futures? No, absolutely not. That's that's to trade stocks, to trade equities. You need twenty five k to trade uh to trade more than uh, three times uh, a day. All right, so now. Now let's jump into the edge, okay? One thing that um, a lot of people are missing, okay, just in the in in the retail space, like um, there's a few things that a lot of people are missing, okay, that I found that helped me tremendously, uh, and it's just a norm. It's a norm for a lot of the pro traders. The thing is, is that if we go back to the the, the example quickly, right? We don't want to be in this. We don't want to be trading in this. 
I know people that were trying to trade Euro USD and pound USD in January, and they were getting chopped out just because they were trading in the choppy market, right? So we want to be able to identify beforehand, before we trade, we want to have a way of knowing or being able to identify that what we trade is likely to move aggressively in one direction, okay? So here are some things that will help us, okay? So number one is a fresh news catalyst. So, and I'm going to give you an example right here. News, people, people talk about, um, people talk about how fundamentals don't matter, but outside of the chart, there are actually a lot of things that are going on, right? So if you trade indices, for example, interest rates, inflation, stock earnings, move the indices, no doubt about it, right? Um, if you're trading gold, for example, when they announced, uh, when the announcement came out on October 7th, uh, we saw gold massive bullish run. When the Ukraine war, Ukraine Russia war was announced, massive bullish run. It's it's a it's a safe haven uh, commodity, right? So these are there are real things that are happening outside of the chart, right? If you become aware of what, if let's say you tra you trade oil, if you, if you if you become aware of what makes oil consolidate and what moves oil, then that gives you an advantage, right? So. One of the things that I believe a lot of people uh, neglect is understanding how uh, fundamentals or just fresh news uh, influences what they trade, okay? Number two. Um, number two would be, and this, this, isn't, this, this isn't in any order, right? But you need volatility, okay? So understanding that you need, in order to, to, to trade in one direction, you need that volatility and that volatility can be caused by the fresh news, or you can identify that there's uh, more volatility by volume, okay? And a lot of people in this Forex space, they don't use volume because the volume is practically useless from the, um, the CFD uh, space because we're, we're, B bro we're, B we're trading VBook with brokers. like So we don't have access to real volume. But in the futures market and the stock market, What's underneath the price, price action, like the candles, is you can see the volume that's being traded. So you can see the conviction of people before pre-market. You may see high levels of volume, higher levels of volume in pre-market or after the market opens. And this can help you understand or um, if the volume, like the relative volume, if it's higher than the relative volume, like let's say volume is at a certain level. And after the market open, volume is significantly higher than even other days. That also can give you conviction that there's going to be a higher amount of volatility. If you look at, right, VWAP, right? If you look at, uh, if you go and compare the volume of oil uh, in these days, right, versus uh, these these trending days, it's going, to be, it's going to be different. So my recommendation is, okay, and, and then the fourth one, let's talk about the fourth one. The fourth one is strong technical patterns, right? So uh, I've adopted a uh, I've I've adopted a system of grading my levels. Okay, so when a lot of people say it's a strong level, that's arbitrary or that's ambiguous. It's vague. Just to say it's a strong level, but levels can be seven, eight, nine, ten. Right, of levels of strength are different based on uh, the the um, based on the the characteristics based based on the characteristics of the level. Right. So if you have a level that hasn't been touched since 2015 or hasn't been broken since 2015, <laughs> every time the level comes to 2015, I mean, uh, since 2015, every time the level comes up every year and it's just, it, it, it's, it forms as a strong resistance and price returns, uh, reverses the other way, that's a level 10, right? Versus maybe a one minute level, which is a, 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 a has a different rank, right? So having strong technical levels and strong technical patterns is another way. Now, once you have these things start to stack up, let's say you have strong news catalysts, strong volatility, right? High volume, I mean, not strong volatility, high volume uh, and strong technical patterns. This is what makes the A plus setup. This is what makes the setup that you get larger in because you have several confluences stacking up. And these are the setups that maybe you take these once a week or maybe just two or three, four times a month. And they uh, contribute to the majority of the PL that you have for, for the month. Okay. So 
if you're just starting out, you're going to be drinking from the fire hose. You're going to be learning a lot of technical patterns. Um, but as you start to to grow, what I would what I would be trying to figure out one thing that's that should be that should go in your playbook that should be like you should be thinking about all the time is how to differentiate between when this is going to happen on what you're trading and when this is going to happen. And I promise you, there are indicators, there are signs, right? Sometimes you just have like you have something that may seem random, and that's going to happen just because. Uh, there are a lot of people around the world doing different things, right? So you may just have somebody that's liquidating a lot of something for, for a reason we don't know. But if you have a big theme that's happening and you have a large, large move that continues throughout the market, a lot of times there are indicators there that you can look for that will help you that are just, sometimes they're technical, but other times uh, they aren't, okay? So a lot of times when people get chopped up here, um, there may be other other variables that you can you can use uh, that may that may be on like just mark the basic market structure. So, any questions so far? We're going, we're moving. Any questions about the playbook, the system, uh, fresh news, high volume, strong technical patterns, etc. Um, the reason I the reason I want your questions is because this is only part one, right? So we'll continue to have these discussions, and by based on your questions, I'll know like what to uh, include in the next, you know, in the next set of. Um, slides in the next part okay all right how I have to a question bro i apologize for interrupting i'm at work so it's kind of hard for me to type yeah go ahead but, um my question is that all right so so i've been trading for like i traded for like like i'll probably say it'll be three years in april right and mm -hmm. i'm kind of i'm on the verge of literally being profitable like i done got funded payout i mean uh funded accounts and mm -hmm. got payouts and literally like a day before my payout messed it up but in addition to that i feel like it's because and i feel like a lot of people are dealing with this as well it's because like my financial my financials aren't necessarily where i want them to be but i'm still trying to trade so i'm like stuck in between um like i'm actually at work right now like i said i, I started working two jobs i'm in between trying to um pay off my debt and then trade again or just trying to trade and while while um while I'm still kind of in debt um but I feel like it's a psychological thing because I know how to trade like like I know like I know my strategy like the back of my hand but I feel like my psychology is kind of messed up because of my finances so I'm just trying to figure out like what the exact problem is in my uh in my in my strategy like I don't know if it's if it's the edge or what it is exactly but I do believe that it's it's partially the edge because there will be there will be times when, like you said, like like I'll be profitable and then it'll be uh like a week, like I'll have like a bad day, Monday will be bad, and then I'll take a break and then I'll come back. And it'll just be like a, a downward spiral in a way, not necessarily like risk management, but just like psychologically. You know what I mean? Yep. Yep. So all right, there's a few things there, bro. Number one, if you don't have stability like financially, it'll be hard. It's going to be hard to trade. So that's, that's the first thing to think about, you know, um, even when you go work for a prop firm, like Lance talked about in the podcast, they pay them a salary, you know what I'm saying? Just so that they can at least be alive, <laughs> you know? So if, if you having that turbulence like financially, that can cause a problem. So I would, if you take a step away from trading to focus on getting that stability, it's not a step it's not, it's like a step back to take two steps forward, right? It's like taking one step back to take two steps forward. So don't think about it as if, you know, you're, you're going away from trading. That's the first thing I would say to you. The second thing is the, the way to find out if it's psychology or not is in the data. So you're going to have to dig into, you're going to have to use what we're talking about here uh, by creating these setups. Somebody asked, what's the difference between the playbook and setups, right? So for me, um, a setup is... It's gonna be it's gonna be uh, all of the rules, and I'm, I'm gonna break down like what a setup is in in a minute, right? So a setup is gonna have all your entry, exit, and trade management rules, okay? So that's like your that's a setup, for example, okay? So I may have a buy setup, uh, a short, uh, um, a sell setup, and the playbook houses all the setup, okay? So you can have three, four, five setups inside of the playbook, okay? So if I had, if I used to carry a binder my binder was my playbook just think about like if you ever played sports for example right so you may have 
uh, in sports, you have a coach, they have a playbook, and you have different plays in that playbook that you execute at different times. So that's what the this concept is. You have your playbook and you um you you know execute those different setups at different times when they're um appropriate or when they're in play, right? So the the concept of of something being in play is if you think about sports, let's say a Kobe Bryant, for example, the if 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 they're if they're, if there's a tie winner and he has the last, like somebody has to take the last shot, Kobe Bryant is in play. Um, may he rest in peace, right? Because he's one of the best. He was one of the best, uh, like to ever live, right? Or Stephen Curry, who's living now, he would probably get the game when he shot. He is in play because of the circumstance and the scenario. So when you have this playbook, you start to learn how to deploy these different setups in different circumstances. Um, and it take it all takes time, right? So I hope that makes sense. So now for you, bro, that ask the question. Um, I don't know if you have your setups documented. What you're gonna have to do is you have to sit down and review all of your data and find out. Uh, like it's two things. Like number one, you look at your, um, look at all your trade setups and this takes discipline. It takes time. It's not easy, but this is the way to find out if it really have edge or not. So you sit down, you uh, label all of the trades that you have, you tag them with a name. So I say, like, if I say, uh, you know, uh, X, right. Or setup A. All right. So you could tag in all the setup A's and you look at your data and then you say, okay, setup A is, is it positive or negative, right? Um, and you, when you look at setup A, you want to document like when it when it loses and when it wins, if if it was according to plan or if it was random, right? So sometimes you may take a trade and it's just you have these random wins, but you want everything that's in your trading data to be tagged with a playbook name. Either it should have a playbook name or you should just label it like random trade or something like that, right? Um, and then you look at your data and you should be able to tell by your data. Um, if you are positive over, you know, a certain amount of time or not. Right. So we'll talk a little bit more about it. I think I can answer your question a little bit more uh, once, you know, as, as we go into it, um, as we go, you know, get further into the webinar. Uh, Thank you. That, that, does that, did I answer a little bit of it? Yeah, definitely. Especially the, 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 so I was kind of confused when you were saying playbook and setup, but the way yeah. you just explained it with, with Kobe and taking the last shot, I understand what you're saying now. It's just yeah. situational. Yeah. And it's situational. That's right. All right, so I'm gonna answer a few questions here. How to find news? So it all depends on what you're trading, right? Uh, if you're trading indices, indices, American indices, U.S. indices are impacted by everything that has to do with the Fed and the U.S. data releases, right? So you can find that news on Forex Factory, uh, Investing.com, or and then earnings, earnings releases. You can find those on uh, like a Finviz.com. You can find those on all those on TradingView. Uh, there's several different sites, right? Uh, for that. The news you can get from Forex Factory at a base level, but we can, you know what, I'll probably just do like a whole, uh, a whole do, I'll do like a whole thing on news, like uh, during this month as well. Okay. Will you send a re recording? Yes. What kind of news effects you go sturdy, like from where uh, to get it from? Uh, okay. I'll, I'll explain a little bit more about that. Is the playbook based on what moves the pair stock or our best setups? Okay. So uh, that's, that's a good example. That's a good question. So, the question here is it's important because what I've learned is that the symbol symbols have their characteristics, but mostly everything that I've traded, they all move um, from one of these three things here, the fresh news, high volume or uh, strong technical patterns. One of these three are our indicators that these symbols, that the symbol, whatever you're trading is going to move. So once you identify, so it's like a, it's like a principle. So that that's the principle, but you may have to identify what specific news will move what you're trading. Okay. So once you understand that principle, right. Um, now your job is to find out, okay, if I trade, let's say I trade um, palladium, <laughs> right. Uh, let me give you, I'm gonna give you, a, I'm gonna give you a real, a real hard example. Uh, with NAS 100. So I know I know indices like the back of my hand. So I know what fresh news moves the indices. In our Trader X group, we know what moves the indices and we're, we're waiting on it, right? That's the specific US like news like CPI, for example. CPI uh, moves the indices. You'll see it moving the indices. Certain, certain earnings that come out from certain stock companies move the indices, okay? All right, so 
when you whatever you trade, you have to take this principle of the fresh news and start to research. You can ask ChatGPT, like what moves gold? And ChatGPT will tell you or will lead you in the right direction. So eventually what happens is you have your best setup and those can can you can move those around and trade different things. But as you get used to certain, um, you know, certain specific like sectors, right? You may have a specific like Forex may move specifically based on certain things more than others. You learn those specifics and then you're able to like take your maybe one setup that you have and you, a variation you apply to, you know, uh, something else that you trade, like a, a different thing that you may trade, right? Natural gas, like energy, energy commodities may move a certain way and metals may move a certain way, right? So that, that's an example, but it just takes time to to uh, to learn that, right? So let me see, what do you think about Renko bars? I've never used them. I've never used the Renko bars. All right, so let me show you, this is a trade uh, that was NAS 100. I just want to show you like an example, okay? Like what's in the what's in the playbook, okay? So this is a NAS 100 trade and um, like what's inside the playbook? Let's get into that a little bit and then we'll continue, okay? For the playbook, do you have um, to add a playbook along the way. I'm not, I can't really uh, understand your question. Can you rephrase it for me? All right. Uh, I am right to say edge is equal to a blueprint or a bigger picture. Okay. How many setups should we start with towards making a playbook? I, I say just start with one. Like Lance, he talked about starting with one and that's how he had a breakthrough, right? For me, it was just two. I had, I had a buy version and a sell version, right? Just start with one. Okay. Start with one of those, right? And then just refine it right? Become good at it. Forward test it. Back test it, right? Get data as much as you can and then forward test it. Forward testing is when you you trade the setups. You don't give it a lot of size, just maybe 0 0.01. You trade the setups with small size so you can see the outcome of what happens and then you can look back at the data. All right. So uh, Gurdip, in, your, in, in the YouTube video, Lance said that you can start taking your setup in the live market after five data points. What are your thoughts on that? How many data points minimum should uh, minimum uh, should we collect to validate our edge? All right, so so this is a great question. Uh, go to deep. There are certain scenarios that you can back test where you have a lot of data. So he, if, if you listen, he says like, if you get fifty data points, that's a great data set. But then there's some like maybe uh, CPI trades that don't they don't happen a lot, right? Because CPI or inflation types of releases. Uh, may only come out a certain amount of time, uh, like in the month. So you may not be able to gather a whole lot uh, of that data. So what he was saying with the five points is basically, if you can, you start to forward test it, you put small size. And as you see, and under, understanding the underlying principle though, those those three underlying principles that we can't like move away from that is with the fresh news, the strong technical levels and the high volume no matter what the setup is, they're always using like a combination of those or one of those, right? So whatever the setup is that you may have that has five data points, um, you have, in, in my opinion, you'd be using one of those, right? You'd be using one of those as, as a base to say, okay, we are in play because we have one of those things going, going for us, right? Um, and then what he means by putting the trade on in the live market, you put it on with small size. And then you maybe after a month or so, then you look back and you start to you start to see, OK, I have more more data points. Right. And then I can increase the size. All right. So that's 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 how I, I read it um, when he said it. And he said 50. He said 50 was a good point um, as well uh, in the in the interview. OK, do you allow yourself to enter again if you hit stop loss or that is not professional? No, absolutely. If you get it's So it's professional to rem it's unprofessional to remove the stop loss. <laughs> And then um, it's unprofessional to remove the stop loss and let and 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 let the trade run against you. It's professional to let the, the stop loss be hit and then you re-enter if you if you still have confirmations. Okay. All right. So forward testing should be done in demo or live account. It can be done in either or. In demo, you can do it whatever size. In live account, you can just do it with small size. The the importance is gathering the data. If I, I prefer, I'm preferring more and more to do it in the live live account. But you just got to put on 0 0.01, like the smallest size ever. But if you if you do it in a demo, you do it for a while. But you can do forward testing in in a live account. You just have to go um, the smallest smallest amount of size as possible. Okay. All right. So 
All right. So, all right. What's in the playbook? Okay. Now, when you document a setup, what you're going to be documenting is, um, and this, this is the framework that Mike Bellafuri designed, big picture, the big picture outlook, what's going on from a big picture standpoint, the intraday fundamentals. Okay. What's going on intraday. If there is fundamentals or not, uh, technical analysis, like if you need, need fundamentals to move, uh, to trade this type of setup, right? So some setups, no fundamentals at all. Some setups, you need you need fundamentals, okay? Um, number three is a technical analysis. Like what um, what are the technical levels? Are you what, what's the market structure look like? What's that daily bias, right? You say I can't form I can't find my daily bias or weekly bias, right? What does that look like? Um, sometimes it's not clear, and sometimes you may not need to trade if that's not clear for you, right? Um, sometimes the weekly may be ranging, but you can trade within that weekly range, right? Um, so defining those things, what's the order flow look like or, or what, what does the volume look like, right? So in my scalp setups, the students that are in my scalp, my scalping uh, group, um, they know that I talk about, okay, volume as the, as price is ranging and then volume comes in as the, as you break out of the range, you want to see high volume when you break out of the range. And then as you're reapproaching the, the range that you broke out for the retest, you want low volume and you want price to grind back towards uh, the range, the the what's now support for you to enter. But if you come back with strong volume, then you're not going to enter, right? So having those types of details are very important when it comes to um, the setups. And then another thing is intuition. Intuition, you don't necessarily have to document it, but just what he what he put in in here, you put intuition here as uh, just as a reminder that you develop more intuition as you trade, right? So a part of taking setups is going back to that poker analogy, a part of the skill is developing this intuition, right? When you see all the confluences and the variables there, um, a part of like your subconscious kicks on and you take those trades, okay? So, so, so you can't negate that part of it. If you never build a playbook, what I want you to start with is the big picture. What the big picture looks like is, is this, for example, this is a setup. Um, are you trending and what, what are you trending up? You're trending down. Are you ranging, right? Um, what's the what's the fundamental outlook? What's the theme in the market? And I'll give you an example in just a minute. Okay, so that's the big picture. Like, what's going on from a higher level, right? What's going on? Like, it can be inside the chart or outside the chart. It can be what I mean by inside the chart. When you talk about that daily bias, like, what's the daily bias? Are we trending upwards? Trending? Um, or trending downwards? Are we? All right. Are we in a range? What is What is the theme of the market? The theme for COVID, for example, COVID twenty twenty, right? March twenty twenty. Um, we're in a massive bearish run to the downside. And the big picture there was fear, uncertainty. People are liquidating stocks, right? Uh, because of that fear and uncertainty, right? So that's a theme. That's a bigger picture theme, right? And this NVIDIA trade that I'm, I'm this NAS 100 trade, I'm going to break down. This one here, the overall theme of the market is bullish because inflation is going down and the Fed is going to cut the interest rates. And when the Fed cuts the interest rates, that helps boost the economy. Businesses do better. So investors are investing into the stock market, right? The A uh, tech is doing extremely well. So this is a big picture outlook, right? So as a trader, you may say, oh, that sounds too like too much. Trust me, the more you do it, the more you become used to it and the better you'll become as a trader, okay? By being able to have an outlook on what you're trading, being aware of what's going on with the symbols, the pairs, the the index or the commodity that you're trading. Um, and it, it, it's hard at first because I couldn't conceptualize being where I am now. But trust me, um, the more you do it, uh, the easier it becomes. All right. Now, intraday fundamentals. You can start with whatever you're trading currently. And you can research and look at all of the data releases that come out on Forex Factory and how they impact what you're trading. Okay. So I, I have a fundamentals course. If you want to take that, that will help you out, right? But I've learned the types of fundamentals, like the back of my hand, that move the indices, right? So I'm right there every day that fundamentals are coming out. At the beginning of the week, I know what's coming out. I know that this may be a day that offers a lot of volatility for me to trade, right? So taking the time to, to just research that. We have chat GBT. We have a lot of resources at our hand. This is, uh, um, this is, you know, this is this will this will help. Okay, what is the three hour time frame is downtrend and daily is uptrend? It all depends on where you are. So when I say big picture, understanding if you're on a daily, 
right? If that's your big picture trend, you're looking at that trend and you say, okay, I know I'm in an uptrend. And if you choose to take a counter, you know that you're taking a counter. So you don't get um side sidetracked, right? Or you don't, you don't get um, you won't take a hit because you didn't you didn't know what was going on in the bigger trend, right? Um, so it all depends on your your strategy and what you're doing, where you're at, right? So that that question uh, needs more um, needs more information. Okay, all right. So uh, can you can you explain, for example, today or yesterday fundamentals or indices on outlook? I have to do it. I have to. Do, we're running out of time because I'm going to have to break my fast. <laughs> um, so we'll, we'll we'll get into more details. Uh, okay, for like this week, we'll look at this week, and um, I'll talk about I'll talk about it more in detail. Right. So technical analysis now, now okay. So I have my big picture. I have the intraday fundamentals, right? Um, now, the technical analysis, uh, when it comes to the zone, what's the level zone that I'm in, right? Um, how am I going to do my entries, right? So I have specific entries for my scalp setups. We have VWAP. We're trading with VWAP. We're trading with 9 EMA. So I say, hey, look, when this happens, enter, right? When this happens, exit 50% and let the other 50% run, right? Um, how we're going to manage the trade when we're going to go to BE, all these, all of these details, the more, the more details, you more detailed you are about these setups, um, you know, the better, uh, and it'll, it'll help you when it comes to tracking what is working the best. Okay. Now order flow and volume, reading the tape, as our brother mentioned, um, from IAT, right? So convergence, divergence, high volume, low volume, et cetera, all those things should be documented. Uh, for your particular setups. Now, when you document a setup, you won't have all of these. You may you may not have intraday fundamentals, right? So this is just a framework to help everybody, uh, uh, you know, to get started, right? So this Nas 100 trade I had Nvidia. It was intraday fundamentals. Nvidia was announcing its earnings, and Nvidia is the third largest stock, right? So Nvidia is the third largest stock, and I know that um, Nvidia is going to move Nas 100 because it's the third largest stock, right? So that's my intraday fundamental, uh, my intraday fundamentals for uh, this setup, right? So that's what was for this particular um, setup. I'm gonna have to get into the setup some more uh, later, just because of time. Um, but but I had a huge setup, the one that I mentioned up up here, right? Oh yeah, here we go. Yeah, it was a huge buy, right? Huge buy setup, and the buy setup um, that I that I that I took was because uh, of that Nvidia trade, right? So me understanding that. No matter what, I don't care what anybody says. <laughs> if earnings are strong, the bu the the bulls are gonna run. Everybody's trying to time the turnaround on the indices, trying to go bearish. But we have strong, resilient earnings, especially from the top uh, companies. Then we're gonna go extremely bullish. Okay. All right. So now, any questions up to up to now? Um, I just wanted to say hi. First of all, yes. I, uh, we had a one on one call back in January twenty twenty three. Yes, I um I often post. I'll put my video on if you like. I often posted uh, my profit shots. Um, yeah, yeah, Juno. In, yeah, Juno. That's it. You you messaged me the other day. You want to do an interview with me, which I accept. <laughs> yeah. Um, it was just <laughs> trade trade management. Um, just a tip for anyone if you want to add it in their playbook. I decided to take it to a whole new level because I struggled with um taking losses and I was often moving my stop loss, which was against my playbook. So I decided to speak to someone on Fiverr and actually program a bot and put it on a VPS on my MetaTrader, which would just cut my trades at a like a predefined maximum loss. And it's helped, it's completely changed my my trade management because I know that that's going to happen. So I'm not going to go against my stop loss. If I ever did, my the bot will just cut it off. And I've added that into sort of my playbook. Mine does look a bit different to yours, but it's still after we had that chat a year ago when you told me to just stop trading real money and just get onto the demos and prove myself, yep. it completely changed my trajectory and my journey. And now I'm funded multiple times and everything's changed. I trade my own personal capital. It's it's changed completely. So I thought I'd just jump finally jump into one of your webinars because I'm always busy or asleep. So <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no man, thanks a lot, man. We're gonna do the interview, man. Um I've been interviewing a lot of people that are outside of our group, you know, like Lance and, and trying to bring pros, but also I'm going to interview people that um, have had an impact on ProfitX or, or have been a part of ProfitX, right? Just to show how everybody is independent um, and growing, you know, in their own ways, right? Like you you implemented this box, this this bot, right? To help you, yeah. right? So, man, congratulations, man. I'm so I'm so happy for you. Um, and I'm going to schedule the interview with you. But uh, yeah, man, thanks for jumping on and, and making that recommendation for everybody. 
Yeah, no, no, it's cool. But no, keep keep doing what you're doing. You know, you, you helped me a lot just from that one call. And it's uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't be where I am now if I hadn't had that wake up call. Because you were just like, you just need to do this. I was like, fine, I'll do it. And then it it got rid of so much sort of angst about losing and all that kind of stuff. And yeah, I just I am where I am now. So thanks for that. Man, congrats, man. Congrats. Yeah, I know you had like over a million in funding. I'm sure you're probably like way above that now. So well, I, one one stage I actually had a hiccup. But you know, got to lose. You learn from your mistakes. Yep. I lost a lot of the funding, but now I've got it all back. But now I'm much more consistent. Yeah. Um, and I trade a lot less without that sort of. Um, my psychology is a lot better now. To just put it that way, is uh, I'm I'm not revenge trading anymore. I'm much steadier, and uh, yeah, it's I'm way more comfortable in my in my in my own skin when I trade. So man, that's good. That's good. Man, so I'm I'm so happy for you, man. Um, yeah, man. So yeah, so cheers, man. We're gonna I'll, I'll have you uh on the on the podcast. <laughs> so yeah. we'll, we'll do like a, we'll do a virtual one at first. So I'm just doing it yep. because it's easy, right? Since I'm in the U.S. Uh, yeah. And eventually, like I'll I'll try to get out to you. Right? Come to the UK. Hey, yeah, you'll be yeah. welcome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so we have so many so many things to cover. Um, any other questions about the playbook just for tonight? Um, if you uh, so I, I said, if you stuck around, I'm going to give you a link to a free uh, futures template. So I'm going to grab the link for that here so that uh, everybody that doesn't have the um, not futures, I'm sorry, playbook template. So everybody doesn't have the playbook template, the notion playbook template. Uh, you can you can grab it, but I'm dropping the chat. I'm going to save the chat and uh, I'll use a question that we didn't get to to form the, the next webinar. Right. So next Sunday, we'll, we'll meet. Okay, this coming up Sunday, this upcoming Sunday, we'll meet again, okay? All right, so, um, all right, now, the process of building a playbook, it's rather simple um, from a high level, and I'll tell you where the difficulty comes. Now, step number one is defining the strategy, okay? We're going to take one strategy, and our playbook, we have a playbook, we just have one strategy. You don't have to have multiple strategies in the beginning. You have a playbook if you have one strategy. If we equivalent this to, if we if we use sports as an analogy, if I am a basketball player and I have a basketball, uh, we, we're a team and we have this one play that we uh, we know, you know, we, we want to test it out. Um, we're going to define it, right? The coach is going to say, hey, look, okay, Abdullah, you're the point guard. I want you to dribble down the court and I want you to pass it to um, Robert, okay? I want you to pass it to Robert. Now, Robert, when you get the ball, I want you to pump fake, and then I want you to pass it back to Abdullah and Abdullah is going to swing it, right? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? So the coach is going to define that strategy. And this strategy, okay, he can invent this one, right? Or he can get it from someone else. My advice would be for everyone on this call, if you want to cut down your learning curve, find someone with edge and learn from them flat out, okay? That's what I would do. And then you start to personalize the strategy, okay? So first is define the strategy. That's number one. Now, secondly, you need to prove that it has edge. Even like when I add new plays now, I'm still adding plays, right? As I add new plays, I have to go through the same process. I have to prove that the strategy has edge. When I first started trading, I remember um, I was trading GN, okay? Um, pound, New Zealand, dollar. And I was getting beat to death on a downtrend looking at double bottoms like i was it was on a downtrend and i was just seeing these double bottoms and i'm buying every time because i first started my i had this double bottom entry model the strategy i learned from this guy he just made stuff up <laughs> and i was getting i was getting punished uh on a downtrend and i just look back and i'm like wow i had no awareness of anything fundamentals uh, uh you know uh, higher level higher time frame market structure etc so one of the things that will help you is your, if you have a mentor or someone that's more advanced, they are aware of things that you aren't aware of, right? Um, so that's that's when it comes to defining the strategy. That's an important step. Now, proving the edge. Now, here is a part that most people miss. I missed it totally. I had no clue of what this was at all, okay? You want to gather data, and this is how you prove that the strategy has edge, okay? You want to gather data. Now, you can gather data in a few ways. Okay, and I'm going to talk about what what's like the common data, just the the bare minimum if you want to just get started. Okay, you backtest. Backtesting is basically gathering data 
with historical data, okay? Historical market data. So defining the strategy, what does that look like? Okay, so here, here's a scalp strategy, okay? All right, so steps for the scalp. Okay, this is what the definition looks like. I talked about um, what's inside the playbook last time and um, you know this from a high level, but I told you this web webinar, I'll get more detail with it, okay? All right, so what's the definition look like? Let's talk about that, okay? What's the definition look like, okay? So define the strategy. All right, here's one. The symbol that I'm trading has to be in play. Now I have a whole definition of um, knowing that something is in play, all right? And that's what I was talking about. Most people miss this step to even, to. Uh, it's a step that would say, should we even be trading this thing? Is oil even worth trading right now? Is NAS 100 worth trading right now, right? Is um, YM US 30 worth trading right now? That's the first step before entry model. If it's not worth trading today, I'm out. I'm not even looking at it. It's off the watch list. It's off my game plan list, okay? So that's a step. And I just, I don't have to write this out because I have, I have a whole other definition of in play for myself, okay? But now, once I know it's in play, then I have the symbol is ranging, okay? On the one minute, okay? 15 minutes, at least two touches, okay? So this is what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a tight range, right? There's a breakout of resistance or support. We have the breakout of the um, of, of this uh, of this range, okay? Then the pullback happens. So this is all defining setup. When the when the break happens, I want to see higher volume. Uh, I want to see higher volume coming uh, than the average volume. So average volume is here, right? So I want to see higher volume as the price is breaking through. Then as price is coming down, I want to see a slower move back to what is now support, right? So this is definition. This is defining, right? Entry rules. I have entry rules, right? How will I enter? I have stop placement. I have, I have how many attempts? Somebody asked me last time, do you enter? Do you re-enter your trades? A lot, most of them I do, right? But some of them are like one and done, right? These are all like types of rules that you can add. You get more uh, and more nuanced as you uh, as you can. So that's definition. That's a part, and you get more 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 nuanced. This is an, it's just an example, okay? So from there, you got to prove it. Now I have my definition. I have to go to I can go to the historical data, okay? Now what am I looking for? My historical data, okay? So once I define it, I go to back testing and I go to my historical data. Now what are just some some common things that I'm looking for from the historical data, okay? I'm looking for my net profit and loss. So I'm gonna take a sample size. Let's take maybe 30 trades, 30, 40, 50 trades, okay? And I'm going to maybe, let's say I have an account size of 100K, account size of 100K. And then what I'm gonna do is I'll say, okay, I'm gonna risk a certain amount of money. And I'm not, you don't have to use the replay to do this. The replay for me is more of a training the eye. When I'm back testing, I'm gathering data, so I don't have to replay. Like when people use programs to backtest data, they just write a code program and they write their criteria and the program runs and then spits out the data for them, right? When you use the replay, the bar replay for me is training the eye. So a lot of people at this step, in my opinion, they make the wrong, um, they make a wrong choice by, uh, they start to replay something that hasn't been backtested. So what's the problem there? I'm gonna, let me ask you a question. Let's say I define the strategy right here. I don't do any back testing. I don't, I don't prove that it has edge and I start to bar replay it and I start to train myself to, to see it in the market. What's the problem here? What's the problem if I start to do that without back testing it? What's the problem? It is an open question for everybody. Yep, everybody, yeah. Uh, you're talking about what happens when you do this strategy without back testing it. Yes, like uh, either you trade it live, or okay, I think if you uh, bar replay, you use a bar replay. Okay, so I think you know this strategy probably won't be you know that that uh, straightforward. You know, you don't know what's going to happen. You think that the strategy the strategy will work, but you really don't know that because you haven't back backtested it. Sorry for my English, man. I'm it's okay for other country. It's all good. It's all good. Yeah, you there have, you go. You so, haven't established consistency or probability. Exactly. I, lo I, I love the, I see the answers here. Uh, somebody said gambling. <laughs> that's basically, that's what it is, right? <laughs> Brandon, the OG is on. <laughs> uh, yeah, right. So you have no idea. You have no idea if this has positive expectancy. You don't know how, you have no idea if it has the edge. So you're reinforcing bad behavior. Uh, somebody put recency bias, right? So I, I I suffered this when I first started. 
I saw this pattern, you know, in the market and the market was trending up and I got used to, you know, playing this uptrending pattern. And then once the market ranged, I got killed. Once it went bearish, I got killed, right? I had suffered from recency bias. I like that. Um, so you have no data, you have a lack of confidence, exa exactly, right? So what we want to do is we is want we want to, uh, first we want to back test, gather that data. And here's some common things. So we take 100K account and uh, you we want the net profit and loss after 30 occurrences, right? We want to document uh, also the average r and r and win rate. So what this is giving you is you you know what to expect. It's positive expectancy in a certain market as well because what you may find is also uh, there are some different market conditions. So you need to discover that, okay, this trade works in these market conditions. It doesn't work in these, right? So I know for a fact that my certain trades I take don't work in a consolidated market, in a ranging market, right? I know certain setups don't work there because I back tested, okay? And I forward tested and I've live tested, right? Um, so, but you want to start, you want to document these about your setup. Now, how do you, how do you determine the average r and &R? How do you determine the average r and How do you determine the average win rate, okay? When you go to back test, I recommend you can do this on paper. You can do this on Excel. Most people are, are back testing manually. Um, what I normally do is I do something like this and I'll have, I'll have these columns, right? I have one to one, one to two, uh, one to three. And this is just an example, one to four, right? You, you create a little table for yourself. This is going to be your results table. You can do this in Excel. Um, you can do this on pen and paper, right? I did, I've done it in Apple notes. I've done it in all kinds of ways. I've done it pen and paper. So let's say you put a trade on. So this is trade number one. All right. Trade number one, once you put this on, you're going to say, yes, it hit one to one. Yes, it hit one to two. Yes, it hit one to three. No, it hit one to four. Okay. And as you put these on, what you're going to do is yay, nay, 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 right? Yay, yay, nay, nay. It didn't hit nothing. It, it's a loss, right? And what eventually what you'll you'll come away with is a pattern. You 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 can calculate from the trades your average win rate. That's one thing. But then also you can look at your columns here and you'll see on average how many times did it hit one to one? Maybe 80%, let's say. How many times did it hit one to two? Maybe 75%. Okay, these are these are arbitrary numbers. How many times did you hit one to three? Maybe 60%. One to four, okay, maybe we dropped down to 45%. One to five, maybe we dropped down even lower, right? Uh, 15%, maybe it's a big drop from here. And these may be based on zones as well. It can be it can be levels, it can be zones. This is just an example. This is, a, this was a, is an easy uh, point of reference here uh, to show you, right? Um, so now what you walk away with is, you know, your, you know, it, it has positive expect expectancy. Okay. And there's some things to watch out for when you back testing as well, like, uh, bias, right. Confirmation bias. Then there's, um, there's look ahead bias and I'll talk about it. Okay. So average R and R average win rate. Okay. We walk away knowing those things. So we have not only we prove that it has edge in certain markets, right. We, we know when it doesn't have edge. Okay, that's another key. And then also we have some statistics. So what what will do what will this do for the person that takes losses? Let's say we win on average. I'm just using small numbers here. On average, we win six out of 10. All right. When I take four losses, I expected that. I expected to take those losses. This this helps with the, di the dynamics of the psychology. A lot of people are just shooting in the dark. So it's it, it's it's too much turbulence psychologically. But if I know that I am expecting in the series of 10 that I'm going to lose four, that, that changes the dynamics of everything. Uh, trade variance, we'll talk a little bit more about it. But any questions so far? As I mentioned, high level, we can go, we'll go more into detail. Oh, oh, sorry, yeah, sorry but, about that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah first of all, I'd just like to thank you for um, obviously host, hosting the webinar and the YouTube videos as well. It's really, really helpful. Yeah, the question question I have is, I, I feel like when I when I've been trading recently, um, I've I've just been struggling in terms of like trying to get playbooks together. So, mm -hmm. um, so obviously I use like liquidity concepts and stuff in uh, my trading. So, in terms of say if I was to start with one playbook or or two, mm -hmm. um, how can I word it? So. 
say if I I would class one playbook as like just using the Asian range. So I don't know, the London Opens takes the Asian range and then it's still below that there in New York session. Mm-hmm. The Asian high is still intact and then I don't know, some kind of market structure shift happens in New York to then take uh you know target the Asian high. I can class that as like one playbook. Is that correct? Kind of thing like I don't know, just call that playbook like the Asian Asian low or Asian high for example. Mm-hmm. If that makes sense. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So so all the way down to the entry and the, the trade management, right? So like from what you just said, so okay, let's say like this is the Asian session uh trade and you're only gonna take this uh going from Asian to London, right? So with that, within that time window, there's certain things you need to see. You want to define it, right? Certain things you need to see. And then yeah. like, what's the, what's the environment? What's the big picture? Okay. Yeah. You're defining the big picture. Now that's your outlook. Okay. Um, and then you said, okay, you need to see certain market structure shifts. Once you see those, you need to define it. As I mentioned, like, and when I showed the example, I'm writing out, okay, this, this is what I need to see, right? These are my criteria. And then down to the entry. Okay. How am I entering? Where am, I, where am I placing my stop loss? Where am I placing my TP? Okay. Uh-huh. Then go even further. All right. All right. Uh, am I going to break even? Right. Yeah. How am I taking profits? I'm taking 50%, et cetera. That's one. Oh, okay. That's one setup right there. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So then just collectively grab those exact same uh, occurrences and then, you know, build them up into a sample size of like 10, for example, as you said, and then just lug those down over time. Yeah, there you go. And and the thing about wow. that is that this is free. You don't have to, like, you can take this process yourself and you can do this when the market's closed, you know? Mm-hmm. On the weekend, everybody on the call, like this weekend, this is the homework, right, for everybody. This weekend, if you don't have, a, like, clear, clearly defined rules and data, like a to say, I'll say, okay, I don't know, like, one through five here, you don't have that document it spend this weekend doing that don't take another trade until you've done that and try to take a larger sample size if you can like 20 30 40 trades even if you can yeah okay yeah well i appreciate that a lot bro. thank you very much yeah. you're welcome man thanks for the question i think that's a question you're speaking for a lot of people yeah that's, you know? that's it <laughs> so yeah no, thank you you're welcome so all right so uh the thing is is if you listen to the podcast that i did with lance uh, Lance Brightstein, right? He said, and one, he's like, five trades is enough for some certain setups. And at first, I didn't understand this. I used to always say, like, you need, you need, you need like a hundred. Okay, you need a big number. And for certain setups, you do. Um, for certain setups, I believe if it's all structural, or not structural, but technical, I believe you need more. The way that I trade now, it's based on um, when the, when I talk about the concept of something being in play. There's an underlying principle below before I even get to uh, like my technical chart, right? Or there's a, there's an underlying principle before I get to my entry model. This is what it is. There has to be a catalyst for movement. So the presence of the catalyst, I'm going to be back testing that as my foundation. For example, here's a concrete example. For FOMC, let's say I go back and I backtest every FOMC event. Um, and what I mean by FOMC, let's let's use the Fed funds rate. Um, I go throughout the year and I go and just backtest um, how much percent US 30 moves uh, when the Fed funds rate is increased, when it stays the same, and when it decreases. So that's a catalyst. Now, if I come back with some um, percentages to say, okay, US 30 normally moves on an average of it moves an above average on those days. That right there is the principle that's underlying to tell me that, all right, this is a catalyst that I can count on. Then I move into certain entry models and entry strategies, right? So I would start off with 30, like it depends on how you trade. I would start off with 30 and do as do more, you know, maybe 40, 50. I think when you get around 50, that's, that's um unless you're doing micro scalping, like, uh, min, uh, microscoping. I think you're doing like HF, HFTs. That's different, right? Um, you you probably you're using an algorithm, using programs, so you can you can do like hundreds and hundreds of back testing. Um, but if you if you're doing something that's manual trading, 
try to get up there like 40, 50 if you can. I think that, uh, and look at it historically, like over uh, over several um, periods of time. Um, and if you can if you can mark out when exactly uh, you have edge versus when you don't, I think that's a that's a good starting place. It's a good starting place. Um, if you can get if you can get a hundred, do it right. But I'm just saying, like for the beginning person that's just starting off, if you can get fifty, that's a good that's a good set, right? And Lance says that himself um, as well. So I hope that answers the question. All right, now let me see what time it is. You know, I am fasting, <laughs> uh, so let's see. Let me see something real quick. Let me uh, let's go back up to. I, I, I'm going to answer some of these questions. Let me get back to. I want. There's a few things I may. I want to make sure I cover. I'm here. A few principles, and then we will. I get to get some more of these questions. Okay. All right. Uh, let me see. All right. So we talk about the process. Okay. Go back to the process. Now, forward testing. Okay. Now, forward testing. Um, this is basically you're going to test your strategy on future market data. Now, the reason why there's a few like really good reasons why this is important. One is because the market changes, right? That's one. Um, and you want to, you want to, you know, test the strategy that you have as the market is changing on future market conditions. Okay. Because you can validate that there's certain, certain setups are still relevant. Okay. Um, and it's, this is, some of these concepts are hard to understand in the beginning. So you may have to replay this. And just as time goes on, you'll trust me, you'll understand more of them. When I first started, I would hear these things and I didn't really understand. But as I got more market experience, I can see, a, oh, okay, I see how what people mean about the market changing. Okay. That's one reason. The second reason is back testing, like historical data. You're looking at the chart. Your emotions aren't involved, involved. Your skill isn't involved. Okay. So going through that period of forward testing also is a test of your skill. It's a test of you. Can you trade the setup? Right. Do you have the the ability to to scalp? Do you have the ability, the patience to swing trade? Right. Those are things that you have to be like you, you as an individual, your personality, your character has to be tested. And this is a time that it's tested, like through forward testing as well. Right. And then there's also this is the third point that's kind of hard to understand as well, is sometimes there are new events that you cannot you don't have any historical reference for like COVID, for example, COVID there's like, it's unprecedented, or you may only have small amount of historical times when certain things have happened and you want to take advantage of them. You can initially start off by forward testing the idea. And as you see, things are working in a small amount of time, you have to make adjustments and you adjust. This is what pro traders have to do. They have to make adjustments in a small amount of time. So they start to put these ideas on these trades on and then they'll, they'll, They'll incrementally start to add risk and then, um, you know, start to live trade, right? So this is something else that, so right now, if you already have some ideas, you can start putting them on to get to gather data, okay? Now, here's another pro part of it that is extremely important. Let's say you do back testing. Let's say you do forward testing. You have the data and you don't do anything with it. This is in extremely important, the refining stage, meaning you look at the data and you say, okay, this is a 50% win rate. How do I change this up a little bit in order to get to 60 or in order to get the 52% or to get the 55%? Like just those small percentages tweaking something, you may say, okay, I see that I, I've traded this strategy when it's ranging, right? Or something about the Asian session that I, I can I can recognize there's a pattern there. So now I'm gonna I'm gonna pull back and I'm gonna um uh, or I may be aiming for one to three, but normally we hit one to two. So I can increase my win rate by doing that, right? So these are just ideas, but this that refining stage is a stage that you have to continuously do. Brandon has been trading for four years. Um, Brandon is successful, right? And he knows this, like he's had to make refinements, right? Um, I've had to make refinements. Anybody that's been in the game knows that you have to make these refinements. Um, uh, and so that's something that you gotta always be kind of looking back at as you continue uh, to trade, right? So it's going to be like this process of, okay, you back test when you add a new strategy, you forward test, you go to refine, then you need, you come up with a new definition, right? Or you may like, you know, change up the definition, upgrade it. You may not need to go back to the back testing or you, you, you can you just kind of look back and you jump to the live trading. Now, do you just live trade without measuring? No, you have to always be measuring. Okay. You have to always be measuring. So, you 
once you start live trading, you go back to the refinement stage. You're always measuring. So what I have running in uh, in uh, Tradezilla, uh, this is one portfolio here is, okay, This here's going to be like, this is what it will look like for you all. All right. So you're going to, you're going to have your setups. Uh, you can do this in Excel. You have your setups as you trade. I use trade just to automate everything so I can save time. All right. Now what's my total P and L? How many trades have I taken? Right. What's the average win rate over here? Right. How many missed trades do I have? Um, et cetera. Right. So as you go down here, uh, my, my win rate, um, uh, uh, was lower on some, on other, on certain setups. Right. So, um, that's what you're going to walk away with. And you're going to dig into that data and start to figure out how can I take less losses? How can I size up on certain setups? Okay. So we go back into the process, uh, part of this, identify where, where, uh, they are buying and selling when the market is ranging. Yeah, that's right. So, um, go back to the process, right? Define the strategy, prove that it has edge, extremely important. Okay. This like when you're courting somebody, you want to make sure the person that you're marrying or that, <laughs> that you're going to take to meet your parents, you got to make sure they're not crazy, right? You got to make sure you know some things about them, right? So you have to go through a, a process of like uh, being a detective, making sure that whatever, you know, the strategy, whatever you're investing into, um, this is your trading business. So when you add a strategy, this is like adding a, a an, an income stream. You want to make sure that this income stream that you're adding is not going to go make you go bankrupt. Um, this investment is not going to make you go bankrupt. This is the background check. I like that. This is the background check. So then you refine and modify. You trade live, okay, knowing your win rate, positive expectancy, like your R&R &R expectancy, and then you track, measure, and refine. You just rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. Get better and better and better and better and better, okay? All right, so any uh, let, me, let me jump into the questions uh, real quick. I saw, let me see. Let me hit, let me hit some of these real quick. Quick unrelated question. How did you manage risk, manage risk for your futures combine? I'm doing a 50K combine now. Not sure if you answered already with Forex. I found it easier to manage risk, but I'm having a harder time calculating risk. Uh, is it you having a hard time calculating the risk or is you are you having a hard time with the, the threshold? I'll just answer both of them. Um, so with the the trailing threshold, what instead of looking at the account size, I look at the drawdown size. Because the account size is, I mean, it says 100K for some of them. It says you have 100K, but the trailing drawdown is 3K. I mean, you don't necessarily really have a 100K account, right? Your buying power is not 100K. So if you are if you want to pass the challenge and look at that threshold, and even when you trade the funded account, you want to give yourself enough trades, right? Where you can have losses and wins, but your equity curve rises, okay? Next. Next thing you want to do is I have a cheat sheet. Okay. You get used to calculating, but make a cheat sheet for yourself. I was supposed to send this cheat sheet out, um, but just got busy. But yeah, you have um the value in points and ticks for what you're trading, right? If you're 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, quick, you can quickly calculate. All right, my stop loss is going to be 50. Okay, here I'm going to use these amount of contracts, or I got to do a micro instead of a mini, right? So, so that's how you can do it. Develop the cheat sheet and you'll just get, you'll, you know, you'll get used to uh, calculating um, different um, the amounts differently. Okay. Check out mind over matter market Douglas. Absolutely. In my, uh, in like my vision board, the thing that I, my statement I read every day, I have that video there. One of the videos, like one of the parts from that series. Okay. I have a problem on validating setups and giving a grade to each setup. I already created a playbook and I filled it with many setups using my strategy rules. And each day I found new setups I added, or I find other scenarios from old setups I added, but the step of validating and grading didn't know how to do it. Now, when you say validating, are you meaning proving that it has edge or do you mean you want to grade the setups? That's a question back for you. So explain it for me if you can. All right. Uh, Euclid, please do it. Can I get access to the uh, notion template. All right. So if you are, can I unmute? Yes. Eunice, go ahead. So I'll answer most questions about playbook process, building playbook, and then other questions we'll, we'll get to later, but uh, go ahead, Eunice. Assalamu alaikum, Abdullah. How are you, man? Alaikum assalam, man. I'm well, how are you? I'm doing very well, man. Um, just a quick question for you. I do have a playbook and I've been back testing a lot, but I think one of the, uh, struggles, uh, one of the things that I've been struggling with is, uh, 
knowing my win rate and all that, and I have it all on paper. But mm -hmm. I think sticking with the with the forward testing is is very challenging, especially when you have like a drawdowns. What what would be like your suggestions for that? Would you say? So you said you have a problem sticking with forward testing because you're in drawdown. Yeah, just just the drawdown, just like taking losses is is, is such a difficult thing. You know, mm -hmm. I'm not quite sure why, but it's a psychological thing that I've been dealing with. Yeah, and, and I'm wondering like um, if you if you have gone through it and how how like have you overcome it? Yeah, are you trading like are you doing like how much size are you using with uh, those trades? So currently with my funded account, I'm only like risking uh, 0.5 percent pretty much. But even then, like uh, just like losing kind of makes me go in a, in a different road, you know. I think um, I think that like you know, losing is a skill itself, you know. Um, I think you probably have to lower your size to a point where you don't it, you don't feel it, right? Um, if if you can like lower it as much as you can to where you can you can let it play out because what happens is it's like once your mind is able to grasp this concept of losses being necessary for you to complete the series, like once the mind sees it, it it's it, it's like it's like the mind starts, it's like you start to react differently, right? So so here's here's an example. I have a simulator that I made for our group. I made it for myself at first, and then I shared it with everybody um, in our group, right? And the idea was, I'm gonna share a different screen uh, for a minute. Uh, the idea of this simulator is to help people. So here's this simulator is to show like out of 10, if you win five out of 10 with a one to three risk to reward, what will happen, right? So like if you here's the simulator, it's like place a trade. I'm gonna I'm gonna start with a loss. All right, now we won this time. This is prob prob probability. It's random. Okay, okay. So we we take a loss. Okay, so I took a loss. I'm down negative one thousand. I took another loss. Now I'm down negative two thousand. Okay. Um, at this point, most people start to kind of uh, flake out a little bit. Um, here, but now I take a win, and now I'm net pro positive one thousand. Right. So your mind has to go through a process of seeing this happen. Cause you can tell, you know, you can, you can say, Oh, I understand probability thinking. You can say that, but you have to experience it. So you have to give your time, you have to give your mind time to experience it at different risk levels. So you, you may be, you may have to reduce your size even more so that you give your, your mind an opportunity to see this happen, right. To see yourself go through these losses. And then your win with the proper win rate, uh, R&R, I'm sorry, with the proper R&R, &R, come back and recover three losses. And as this continues to play out, okay, I took two losses in a row. I went down. Now I took two wins. Now I'm up positive, net positive, you know, 4K. So maybe this is a small amount for you right now on the funded account once you reduce that risk. But just seeing, your, you know, you seeing it happen starts to train the mind to, to, uh, to understand probability to truly understand it and experience it. Right. So that's my, that's my advice. You're going to have to, re I believe you have to reduce that risk almost to where it's like, almost, you don't even, you don't feel it. You have to give yourself the opportunity to experience, uh, wins, um, taking, taking care of losses. If that makes sense. hundred percent, hundred percent. I really appreciate it, man. Thanks. You're welcome, man. You're welcome. Um, okay. Okay. Let's jump. Let's jump. Let's see. I'm happy to pay the fee to be in the market. There you go. <laughs> best loser wins. Yeah. Check out that book, uh, Eunice, the best loser wins by Tom Hogarth. Uh, I definitely, I read it like twice. I'm not oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. You need yeah, to experience so I to tell, it. Yeah, yeah. I have to go through it and experience it for sure. You got to experience. There yeah. you go, man. You got to reduce that risk so you can experience it. Um, and then you start to slowly size up, you know, you say, okay, I'm, I'm good here. Now I need to size up a little bit. And as you, as you go, I mean, I'm telling you, as you size up more and more, no matter where you are in your career, you still have an adjustment. Um, there's some kind of adjustment. Uh, if you're thinking in percentages, it helps though. All right. Um, I've been losing streak. I've been on losing streaks for a long time. I make a few profits for with some setups and lose with them. Or some setups. Do you advise I stay with one set? Uh, so yes, delete those lost setups and you will see a difference in your PL. Yeah. Um, so Samuel, I think it goes back to do those setups actually have edge? I mean, I don't know. You have to go back and find out if they do the setups. You have to, you have to back test and figure out when they have edge, like if they have edge, when they have edge, and when they don't have edge. Okay, so uh, the setups that you that don't have enough positive expectancy, you got to get rid of them. You know, 
Um, and then you may you may need a mentor to look over your trades, right? That's something that can help. You can have someone look over your data and somebody that can, uh, or a friend, like join a trading pod, have some people look over your data, share your data with them, right? They may find something that you don't see. Okay, let's see. Um, I'm happy to pay the fee. Maybe four tests with the smaller size. There, there you go. Oh yeah, Robert, you got it. How long did it take you in weeks, months for a first funded account after finding the edge? Uh, so my very first funded account, um, I had to do the repeat. So I, it was an FTMO account. I had to do a free repeat. Um, so uh, even though I had somewhat of an edge at the time, I didn't do any back. I didn't do like thorough back testing. I'm not as, I wasn't as sophisticated as I am now. Right. So it all depends, but you know, it all depends on how many trades you, you're going to take throughout the month. You can pass a challenge. You can pass a phase one and a phase two in, in one month. You can, it just depends on like how many trade setups you have, you know, uh, and how well you trade. Um, and then, so maybe, maybe like a one, maybe a two month turnaround for payout. Cause once you get, you do the payout with certain fund, uh, companies, it takes time, maybe 14 days, maybe 21 days, et cetera. Right. So, um, yeah. So thank you for asking, do you recommend an LLC, uh, for payouts? Uh, yeah, you're a contractor when you do it, when you, um, when you trade with a, a funding company. All right. What is your recommendation for risk profile on challenges versus funded accounts? Um, I think it all, it all depends, depends on your strategy, but I recommend for most people, if, if you go through the, the challenge aggressive, if you do, you need to drop it down when you're in the funded stage. I believe that uh, it's hard for people to get that first payout. It's a lot of emotions come in play, euphoria, et cetera. Taste that first payout, it'll help out. Once you start to roll and get payouts, you can start to scale up. But I recommend you crawl that crawl your way to your first payout, even if it's small risk, get that refund. Um, get a second payout with small risk and get that, you know, get that taste of that and then start to size up. Do you check your playbook before uh, even pre-market or real time when you want to put a trade on? Yeah. So I used to do that every single time. I would always check my playbook and review it. Eunice, I have my first payout waiting. Man, excellent. Uh, can you once again share us, uh, share with us the notion template? Uh, all right. For the futures account, the better option is to have a trailing stop, especially in short-term models. Uh, yeah. So most of... Most of my trades, like if 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 the trade goes in my direction, most of the time I am not letting um, price come back. I have a I have an exit uh, exit model that will normally keep me taking profits. Will normally keep me take, taking profits. Christian Guzman, can you share your playbook? <laughs> you can you can get access to my setups uh, if you're in my trading pod. But my particular playbook, I put some hard hard. Uh, blood, sweat, and tears into it. <laughs> it's like, it's like, if I, Hey, I say, Hey, Lance, can you give me your playbook? <laughs> He's like, uh, no, sir. <laughs> um, you got to build your own stuff, you know, but, but you can, you can, I give setups, you know, I give setups, uh, uh to my students for sure to help them get started. Um, but, uh, yeah, if we could just go ask Mike Miller Fury, like, Hey man, can I have your setup, your, your, um, playbook? I didn't find any in the industry who does that for free yet <laughs> because man, I went through a lot of pain, man, to, to, to get it. And it's your edge, right? It's your own edge. Uh, so uh, you have to personalize it anyway. That's the other thing. You have to personalize it anyway. Even if I gave everybody on the call, like my playbook right now, you still have to personalize. You have to go through the back testing. You have to go through the forward testing because you need to build your own relationship with it. Right. All right. So uh, last thing before we jump off and we'll, we'll finish more of this. All right. So again, the process of building a playbook, Define the strategy, prove the edge, refine it, revi revise, 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 trade it live. Okay. Know what you're working with, your win rate, your R and R. Okay. And ease your way into trading it, like with size, right? Track and measure. The more you measure, the more you see the data for yourself, the more confidence you have in, in your setup. Okay. All right. So just a few things, last two things I want to mention real quick. Back testing bias. These are two things you want to uh be aware of when you're back testing. A lot of times we will focus on the wins when we're scanning the, the historical data. You may go find when it's winning, but you have to be careful. You have to look for the uh, the setup, right? What I mean by the setup is what's the um, as a as our uh, one of the people in the community um, when they said it earlier, what's what's happening? Asian range, right? Okay, so the setup is happening. Asian range. I see Asian range. Um, I see a certain market shifts. You're gonna have to obey that. Even if it do, even if it's a loss, you need to do the setup. Okay, U.S. thirty is on an uptrend. I have a supply. I have a demand zone. Right, daily is trending. I have um, a daily swing point. Four hour is trending as well. I have a four hour demand zone. Now I'm approaching the demand zone. I have a five minute BOS and I took a loss. 
All right, I need to document that. I can't say, like, you have to be very careful. The mind will skip over the losses, okay? So you have to be very careful. Then the look-ahead bias, there's information that you have now that you may not have had historically. So you're going to have to be careful with um, when you're back testing. You don't want to incorporate the new knowledge that you have because you can easily do that. Look at the historical data in hindsight. Uh, you know, you may have some information that you didn't have, right? So you want to, you have to incorporate that in. You say, okay, would I actually have taken this setup? No, I wouldn't have taken it if I didn't have the information that I have now, right? So that's that's another thing, right? So um, we talked about we talked about a lot here, and I think that if you implement this this weekend, this is your homework, okay? All right, I need to see some. I need to see some like, you know, share some things in IG and tag me, right? Tag me in the stories that you're doing the homework, okay? If I'm gonna do the next webinar, I need to see some homework, okay? Drop it in the, the Discord. Send me an email showing me that you're doing the homework. Tag me on IG, right? Um, and share it in your stories and I'll reshare, okay? Um, you see you doing that homework. I want you to go through these steps with at least one setup. Define it, gather the data, do some back testing, at least the back testing. Not, you may not have time to do forward testing, but just do the back testing. You can do that this weekend, okay? And then show me your stats from one of your setups, okay? Show me that, show me here, the net profit loss if you started with a 100K account. What's the average R and R? What's the average win rate that you're seeing? Okay, start with these three. Send me that. Send me those stats. Send me that data. Do that homework. Okay, and we'll continue these uh, moving forward. Also, let me know what kind of YouTube videos you want to drop. You want me to drop? I'll be dropping some fire content uh, coming up. Okay. <laughs>
that I took this week. And I'm going to explain everything that I'm talking about here with a big picture, intraday fundamentals, technical analysis, et cetera. I'm going to show you uh, in, in, as it relates to gold. So let's talk about the, what's the big picture with gold right now. From my perspective, um, there's two I'm going to talk about, two great opportunities uh, in regards to trading itself only. I want to, so let me ask you a question. Um, how many people, how many of you all uh, had a strategy and it stopped working? Like you had a strategy that was working for some time and then it stopped working. Drop a one in the chat if that ever, if you ha ever had that experience. You were, you, were use, you were using something, it was working, and then all of a sudden stopped working. Okay, we have some ones, right? Um, and I'm, I'm not sure uh, the level of everybody's trading, but if this has happened to you, one of the reasons it didn't stop but became like three trades per month. Okay, that's another thing, right? So, so th there's several different reasons for this, uh, for this happening. Um, but I want to tell you that number one, the way that a lot of us view trading, uh, when we're introduced to trading, we're introduced to like supply and demand like this. Okay, hey, uh, if you want to use supply and demand, all you have to do is just you show up to the chart and you're just going to look for, you know, uh, rally based rally. So you're just going to look for rally based rally. And that's it. You know, once you see rally based rally anywhere, you're just going to wait for price to come back here and then you're going to enter and then you're going to make a lot of money. Right. Um, or we're introduced to some maybe ICT concept uh, or a certain type of entry model. Um, and then when that when, you know, one variation of it does it, it stops working, then we get we start to add more and more and more and more. And then we just we have these complex, uh, very complex entry models and we're trying to filter through all of them and, and figure out when to apply them when um if you a lot of the um a lot of the bigger traders like and prop traders like professional traders um what they're doing is they're looking for the things that are going to be moving so a lot of the traders that trade from the uh, like in the prop space professional traders uh they're looking to understand what actually moves um uh, a lot of these uh, instruments, and if you look at if you look at SPX or uh, indices, it's not just price action. It's not this this bullish run is not just happening because of price action. And then we have a bearish uh, a bearish you know move down just because of price action. If if that's if that's all it was, then um, you would just have a straight you know like you wouldn't have such a um, a uh, skewed move bullish here versus the bearish move, right? We talk, you know, people talk about imbalances and things like that. Um, what happened from October until now is fundamental. It's it's driven by there's a lot of fundamental things that are happening, uh, companies' earnings and things like that, right? Um, it's not just technical, right? So a lot of the professional traders they understand that there's a larger picture at play. They use that, but then they use technicals to uh, hone in and find entries. So with gold, for example, with gold. So we go to the gold trade. Let um, me use GC from the futures market. Okay. So gold, for example, uh, in October, we have uh, the announcement of Hamas uh, in Israel. Okay. So then this, this the conflict, this starts to ha uh, give us a, 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 ma a massive bullish run. Uh, because gold is a is a inflate is a, a hedge against fear. It's a a, um, a safe haven uh, commodity, right? So if there's fear of geopolitical issues, then you're going to have a rise in gold, right? So if anybody that understand this from the big picture, uh, unfortunately, we don't want to um, profit from the loss of life. Uh, but anybody that trades understand that stands that Ukraine Russia war announcement. That's going to drive gold. Um, uh, any types of geopolitical issues um, and war is going to drive gold. Okay, so understanding the big picture, as I said, the best trades start from ideas. So, and, I, and this is going to challenge everybody on the call because a lot of times people are just sitting there trying to trade the same symbol in times when it's not moving when it's choppy and all you're going to do is just give your money away. But I'm challenging everybody to,
to understand whatever you're trading and understand what moves it from a bigger picture. Okay. If you can start, and it's not too difficult. I thought this was difficult when I was just starting. But if you start to just invest more time into studying whatever you're trading, if you're trading just US 30, know why US 30 moves. What causes US 30 to be bullish? What causes US 30 to be extremely bearish? Take that time to invest into it and you'll make a lot more money because you'll be able to um, um, you'll be able to take advantage of opportunities a bit better. OK, so now what's going on with gold? So you do have the geopolitical uh, issues with gold that are going on, but also when the central banks are going to reduce rates and this is just known like people are, this is this is just put out the fed uh, most of the central banks at the beginning of the year are going to reduce uh their rates when that happens gold becomes more attractive to invest in so we have not only this price act we have the big picture narrative supporting the bullish push then also we have price action supporting the bullish push right so when I start, when I write down my big picture, I want to write down that, okay, there's some sort of uh, higher time frame. There's, you know, from a fundamental perspective, maybe a sentimental perspective, um, there are drivers that are pushing me bullish. Then from the big picture, from a technical perspective, I have, I'm, I'm in an uptrend. Okay. So I want to document that as something that is in my playbook. When my um, fundamentals are bullish and my, uh, higher time frame technicals, whatever you use, weekly, daily, et cetera. And if you don't trade like this, it's okay. I'm just giving an example. So if you trade in a different way, it's it's totally fine. Now gold is giving signs of being uh, bullish. So I have fundamentals. I have uh, the the analysts are saying that um, you know the central banks are investing in gold. I see it on the chart as well. Uh, we're extremely bullish, right? So this now I'm starting to position myself for buys. Okay, I'm starting to position myself for buys, right? So this particular trade was I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you on the um the, the normal chart. I won't have the we won't have the value and all of that, but but yeah, here we go. All right, so so now I start to so big picture, bullish, higher time frame, bullish, right? So for me, I have higher time frame alignment, I have the uh big picture fundamental, all of those are aligned. Okay. Now then intraday fundamentals, right? So your intraday fundamentals are your Forex factory, um, what you see on Forex factory, if you use Forex factory, your, your data releases that come out um, in an intraday, right? Um, normally, if you have, if you don't trade with any fundamentals at all, it's okay. I'm just, just giving an example, okay? So what do, I, what do you want to see when it comes to intraday fundamentals? Or you want to see your intraday fundamentals align with your higher time frame, with your big picture? If none of this doesn't matter... Cool. You don't put it in your playbook. If it matters for you, you put it in your playbook, right? Then from a technical analysis perspective, what am I looking for? Now, this goes back to my the definition of my scalp, right? So my technical analysis is that I'm going to have levels. So at the time of the open, okay, um, and this 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 scout this uh this play followed exactly my what I wrote down for one of my scalp setups, okay? So I'm going to show it to you. I'll show you exactly from. Um, I'll show you exactly from my where can we learn and understand fundamentals. Um, so there's many sources. I do I do have a fundamentals course. Um, Numan can drop the link um, for you. Uh, Numan uh, is he he he's on our team. He can drop the link for you. Um, and I cover all of the I cover the fundamentals that impact the currencies, commodities, and indices. Uh, if you're interested um, at it and looking at it, okay. So if you look at my if you look at this scalp setup, so that's so. As I mentioned, most people start from the technical analysis and they start from the entry model itself. But for me, when I say something is in play, right? So here's the step, here's the steps for my scout. When I say something is in play, it either has three things. Number one, it has some uh, fundamentals, a catalyst that's gonna be pushing the market aggressively, right? So gold has risen over 5% uh, what, what this, this month in March, 5%. Gold is risen. That is that is a great push, right? Sixteen percent um, uh, up to last year, twenty twenty three. So we want to be in things that are moving multiple percents. So we don't want to be trading something uh, where it's little small movements because it's going to be harder to extract money. It's easier to extract money when you have big moves, and that's that's where you find the best trades. Okay. Um, so since I'm aware that gold is 
moving so much and why it's moving, that's when I come down and zoom into my technicals. So from there, uh, when I zoom into my technicals, I have exactly what I've written here, okay? It's in play because I have fundamental catalyst that's moving it. The central banks, if they're, if they're investing in gold, uh, then there's likely to be higher movements. It's likely to go to five, 10% uh, gains, right? So I want to take advantage of that. Or if I have a strong technical zone, right? So gold is actually sitting on a strong daily zone. So if we look at the daily, uh, gold formed a daily zone here, okay? Gold formed a daily zone right here, okay? So gold for, formed a daily zone, it's daily support, all right? So um, that's another thing that uh, brings it into play for me. At first, this is in the middle of nowhere. So at first, it wasn't such a strong support. But as it rains for days and days on end, it's showing that it has strong support here, right? Um, if this was a, just another level where we had historical data, this could maybe be like a level that has multiple touches, right? So that's something else that um, that will make something in play for me, right? You have to define for yourself in your playbook what causes a symbol to be in play. Sometimes I can just open up US 30. I look at the chart. It's not in play. That's it. I'm out. I'm not even, I'm not going to sit there and chop up my money. I'm not going to, um, you know, chop up. We just get in. We're trying to force something when, when your symbol is not in play. You need to know what is in play for you. What does it mean to be in play for you? So if I have strong fundamentals, if I have strong, uh, higher time frame level, that's something, or uh, elevated volume. Okay. All right. So here um, we have a range. All right. For this scout. So this range here formed. All right, so uh, we're sitting on top of this zone here. This is a zone uh, that price has been reacting to. And then we're we're near the open and we have this range here. Uh, I drew this here. We have this range and it's ranging as I, as I said in my, um, so we have about, it's a little bit over 15 minutes, maybe about 30, 30 minutes to an hour of a range here on the one minute. And then at the open, we have a massive bullish, bullish break out of that range, okay? And um, I can't show you the volume because the, the chart on trading view for futures is, is uh, corrupted right now. But um, when this push happened, the volume was elevated, right? So I'm looking for elevated volume on the push to let me know that institutions are in, okay? That there are bigger players that are pushing at the open. And then when price comes back to uh, this zone, I don't want to see such a, like this is a solid one, two, three candles, but this was a grind slower. This means that there aren't, like the volume isn't, uh, volume back to that zone isn't like strong sell volume, right? So I didn't see, I didn't see the candles, nor did I see the strong sell volume approaching. That's what I have like defined here, right? Once we push out, I want to see elevated volume. And then as we are approaching back down, I don't want to have like strong, uh, I want this to be slower, this approach back to that range. I want, I want this to be slower as well as I want the volume to be lower. Um, how to know the open. The opening, it's the open of the uh, NY session. So the opening time here is eight, uh, it's 8.30 my time, but 9.30 uh, New York time, okay? That's what I mean by the open. So price pushes up, approaches back to this zone, and we have a candle, um, a buying candle here. Uh, and that's that's what I need to see. My stop loss goes here, and then I'm taking it, I'm taking it up to this, taking I'm taking 50% off here, right, at the next high. Right. So this is my setup defined. Right. The exact setup. We're in a range and we break out of the range. We come back to this, um, uh, the breakout of that range and then we push. Right. So um, this is how it looks in real life, like in in uh, high definition, you know, in live. You know, these are this is how things come together. And I back tested the same setup on different symbols, gold, the indices, et cetera. Right. Uh, so this is how it happened just this last week. So now what would I do? Uh, what I'm going to do is, uh, so that's a reversal candle. Let me talk about the entry rules, right? Uh, I need to have, uh, you know, a reversal candle and I can enter at the close of that candle or like 50% of the candle, right? So here you do have a 50% reversal back down to that candle and then price pushes up. Now, the reason I don't have to have a super wide stop loss here um, is because I'm trading something that is in play, meaning that I have the higher time frame confirmation. I have higher volume that's there as well. And then I have my price action, the volume and the higher time frame and big picture momentum, right? So that's why I'm looking at something that's moving. Otherwise, 
if I'm just trying to trade in a choppy, trying to trade something that's choppy, I don't have the volume, I'm out of session, et cetera, uh, then you're more, li you're more likely to, it's more likely for you to, to get, you know, chopped out, right? So that's what I'm looking at. Um, I need all that volume to be there to support my my setup. And the price went up, uh, hit hit my TP here, okay? And it's a nice, nice quick move, quick scalp. And it's not a scalp as in you going and trying to chop, you know, scalp something choppy. You have a lot of volume and momentum in your favor. That's the difference between professionals that scout and just the scalper that we, you know, we know of, or that, you know, is just the, the normal forex scalper. Um, they don't have a catalyst pushing the, um, the move. They're not watching volume. They're not watching order flow as well, right? So the order flow is another thing that uh, if you trade futures, you can look at level two, you can look at the time and sales, and you can use that as well as confirmations to see that as price is approaching your entry, are the buyers stepping back in uh, to push price higher? And you can you can see this on the the level um, you can see on the level two uh, buyers um, being stronger, and on the time and sales tape you can see the buyers being stronger as well, uh, lifting the price higher and higher and higher. Okay, um, so yeah, so that's an example. Um, so what you would do is after this happens, you would store this um, if you catch it. Or if you miss it, you want to store this play in your database, in your playbook, um, and you want to gather the stats. If you took this, if you took the trade, you want those stats to be in something like Tradezilla, MyFX book, or if you're just documenting manually, you want to you want to document that. Um, you want to document the R and R from your entry to your exit, right? And you want to just accumulate the win rate for March. Like, what's the win rate for this particular setup uh, for March, right? Um, and then as time goes on, you build up this database and you become more confident when you see these setups uh, because uh, you have the database, you have the data to support it, right? Um, so any questions? Yeah, hello. Hi, how's it going? Yeah, yeah, good. Uh, Rick, I want to thank you for your time you're putting in place for us because this stuff you're giving, in fact, even some paid stuff doesn't even get much value like this. We really appreciate it. Oh, man, anyway, in terms of the, I want to find out those stuff in play. I was rather trading that US 30 that was last week. Mm -hmm. And in fact, on the forest factory, there was no any red news. So, and my day there's no red news. US 30 normally, it's just, uh, let me see, ranges. Yeah. But all of a sudden, I just saw some shooter. I wanted to just sell, but all of a sudden, I saw some buyers coming into the market. So I was really surprised where that kind of fundamentals was coming in so you're talking about the fundamentals really be happy to know much about how to know the fundamentals in play because sometimes there is no red news so we hardly found out how those buyers normally come in with that any notice yes so that's a great question great question and i'm, I'm going to cover it because there's a lot of people that trade indices okay um and i've, I've personally traded indices uh okay for the majority of my trading career, okay? There are, there are three major things that move indices. You have uh, rates, like the, the Fed rates, and inflation, you're gonna be watching those, uh, but also earnings from stocks, because why? If you look at, uh, if you understand this part, this is gonna answer your question about not seeing red folder news. So if, you look, if we look at uh, Dow Jones, EJ here, Okay, look at look at the top companies here. Okay, um, not that change. Let's look at the price. Okay, so US thirty is price weighted. So United Health Group, Microsoft, Goldman Sachs, Home Depot, Caterpillar. So if these are moving, US thirty is going to move. So you don't necessarily have to have red folder news for US thirty to move. It it will because when US economic data is printed, you will have movement. But also, if you have earnings from any of these companies that are coming out, that are on the top, right? Let's say you have blowout earnings with Microsoft or bad earnings that uh, with Microsoft, those that can cause US 30 to take a dive. And you wouldn't even be aware of it because you may be only be looking at that red folder news, right? So having an awareness of what's going on with at least the top seven, maybe, uh, stocks of the index that you're trading is important. It can help you. Um, as well Great. as uh, that that red folder note, red folder news. Oh, okay. Right. Okay. Yep. Yeah, I'm getting you. But please, is there any is there any 
is any website or any means of you maybe tracking maybe the first 20 yeah so uh you can use stocks or maybe the first yeah. 10 stocks how they are performing yeah you can you can use a lot of places like benzinga is one they have a free it's benzinga.com benzinga Benzinga.com. Benzinga oh, okay. Benzinga.com. You can check it out. I'm sorry. I, I uh, check Benzinga out. Uh, you can create a watch list where you okay. put all the, the stocks there. And then you can also see news related to each one. You know, there's a site called Vital Knowledge that summarizes. It's a it's a subscription. It costs Benzinga is free. Vital Knowledge is one that costs about $90 per month. You don't have to use it, but just do a free trial and see how the analysts, um, how they summarize things right about stocks um there's another one called earnings whispers so okay yeah just take a look at these different ones and see which one you know which one uh you like all right thanks a lot man thanks for the question great yeah. great great all right thanks, so, thanks to thanks to your reply you're thank welcome. you you're welcome all right i'm gonna keep i'm just gonna i'm gonna blaze through the questions real quick okay so drop your question if you if you type it it'll be it'll help me uh address it faster okay um because i'll try to get as much i'll try to answer as many questions as possible what prop firms are you using for futures? So I have accounts with Apex, Top Tier, Take Profit Trader, and uh, Top Step right now. I'm going to do my funded F, my funded futures, but I just haven't gotten around to them yet. So depending on your, like, if you're just starting out, Apex is good because they're cheaper. It's good to learn with uh, with Apex because they're cheaper. The the cost is cheaper. Then you can do the others. They, they just don't have as good, like the others have better payout uh, systems uh, when it comes to like, the rules of payouts. Uh, but Apex is a good start, in my opinion, when you're just starting out because you can get a challenge right now. You get a 100K account right now for $40. So it's important to note the months that trade works too. I would, because what happens is there's something called seasonality. In seasonality, what you see is there's certain seasons when um, certain commodities are bearish and bullish, right? Um, there's certain seasons when indices are doing certain things, right? Uh, so I think I would, you can, you can start to see a pattern if you're documenting the month. Do you have a course on how to use volume? So in my ZTF course, I've added a volume uh, section. And the scalping course, I, I, I have a, a volume uh, video, a volume section on how to use volume and how to add the futures volume to trading view. Okay, so um, Numan can put like the, the, uh, the scalping course link there if anybody wants it. But um, I, I recommend joining the accelerator if you want like fundamentals, scalping, futures, because I, it's going to be more well-rounded. Um, and I'll, I'll make an announcement about the accelerator later uh, for you, for everybody to learn more about if you haven't been on any of the calls. Okay, uh, Gurdeep, is there a minimum r and Are you looking for these setups or is it to the next high always? Um, so for me, my Xs are normally just based on structure. Uh, there's one scalp setup where I have it based on, it's uh, it's like a, it's a move where it's based on like measuring the move, where it's not based on structure. So, but the majority of my setups that I use are are based on exiting based on uh, structure or, or another reason that I have to close. If I'm trading scalps is like, if we, if we cross back over the nine EMA, like price should be riding the nine EMA. And if we cross over it and I'll show you, I'll show, I'll show a quick example. Um, but I think that's, I think I answered your question um, about R&R. &R. Um, okay. I use structure for TP, but my minimum is one to three. I don't go lower than that. Oh yeah. So for yes, presumably user, check out the, it's in ZTF or the scalping course. Let us know which one you are interested in. ZTF is the highest. Yeah. Check out the ZTF course. Um, Numan can uh, post it there and it, it covers um, volume for, for the fundamentals, how to know or any care keywords or any sign that is announced that the market will drive higher or lower. Because this will help a lot if I know where the market is really going. If they said if the if they say the Fed cuts rates, et cetera, if possible, what is the effect in DXY? For example, Fed cuts rates. Yeah. So what you want to look at is a theme. That's a that's the challenge with fundamentals. You have to follow the theme of where things are going, uh, and and each little data piece that's released, it it either confirms or denounces the theme, right? So if the Fed cuts rates, if any central bank cut rates, normally that causes the currency to go down. Uh, if you look at Euro USD right now, so the central bank, their Fed, the uh, European Central Bank, their Fed is looking to cut the rates, okay? It's expected that they're gonna cut the rates, right? So we're expecting Euro USD to go bearish because 
the uh, when a, when the central bank cuts the rates, the currency goes down. The reason why the currency goes down is because investors, like larger investors, they pull their money out of that currency because um, it's going to yield less of a of an investment, right? If the interest rates are higher, they're going to get paid more. They invest into that currency, like if they buy like the securities that the government offers. If they lower the rates, then they're going to make less money. Just like when you go buy a house or you buy a car, your your car provider he he'll sell you a fifty percent interest rate if you accept it. He's going to make a lot more money. But what you want to do is you want to have a lower interest rate. So in relation to what I just said, the investors, they want the higher interest rates. So, so if the Fed, the ECB, the BOJ, recently the National Swiss Bank, they cut the rates. So you see the you see the uh, the chef. OK, so if you see USD chef, USD chef is bullish. The There was an unexpected rate cut on the chef. So after that, boom, you see all the pairs that are against the chef. Boom, they go bullish. Okay. Uh, so just you have to start to understand those dynamics. You probably, you all can't see that question because uh, the person addressed it to me private. But um, if you start to understand those dynamics, then that'll help you. Okay. All right. Uh, if you build a playbook that you add just good trades that you found each day, how can you grade them? Because it's like you see all of them is A plus. All right. Excellent question. Every trade starts off as a B setup. Okay. And from, from my perspective. Everything starts off as a B setup. And I'm giving uh, a webinar on lessons from uh, um, SMB and I'm adding to the the, the course um, where how to how to delineate your B, A, a B, B plus, A, A plus, A plus plus, right? Um, and the way to do that is everything starts off as a B and then you have to be able to look at the data and start to differentiate what is higher quality, okay? Mostly what differentiates higher quality is that it happens less and has more confluences stacked. All right. But I would say start at B. Don't see all of them as A. Start at B. And then you upgrade them as you see that you have more uh, things stacked. Right. And these the higher the setups, like A++ happens once a year. Those are types that happen once a year. Right. A++ is happens like maybe four times a year. Right. So you're looking at things that happen less but they have more things um, stacked, okay? What's your risk model in trading and evaluation? What's your position size? Are you more aggressive during the eval size? Uh, normally, and I'm normally taking very high quality setups um, when I'm taking the evals. Where I am now, if I was just starting off again, I wouldn't I wouldn't be as aggressive just because I don't have the experience. E uh, evaluation firms you'd recommend for us outside the US. Yeah, if you're, if you're outside the F US, FTMO for sure, no doubt about it. Uh, FTMO is one that I can recommend. Um, there are a few others like I've heard that funding pips is good. I know they recently had an issue, uh, but FTMO for sure. That's one I can recommend. Um, if you don't, if you haven't max allocated with FTMO, then then do that. For Apex, for example, because I know there's trailing drawdown. So are you constantly moving stops? Um, so I'm constantly, I'm either moving the stops or taking profit quickly, you know. I don't, my trading styles, I don't let price go all the way to the TP and then come all the way back down to, or close to TP and then come all the way back down to break even. Normally I'm in something that has high volume now. My trading style has evolved, right? I'm in something that has high volume. So normally price is pushing aggressively to my TP mostly, most times. Okay. All right. Talk about red photo news and seeing market move cap. Do you use CNBC and what do you do with it? I don't use C, I don't read CB, CNBC normally. I use, um, some of the, those things that I put there, there's a, to me, CV, CNBC is a lot, a lot of times it's delayed. A lot of times it's a lot of just uh, jargon. That's, I mean, it's just a lot of after the fact types of things. Uh, normally I use, um, I use vital knowledge personally. I pay for it, but if you're just going to start, you don't have to pay. Um, you can try trade the news. That's another, another one. I use vital knowledge because I use, I, I, I basically, I like to trade stock. I, I, I'm paper trading stocks, but I like to trade indices as my primary. But trade the news is really good for, for currency. So look up trade the news. They, ha, they, they bring all of the news together for you in one place so that you can, and you can do all these uh, watch lists and stuff like that uh, to, to only receive the news for what you trade, right? So if I just watch CNBC, I don't want to like, I don't want too much information about things I don't care about. So I, I normally use these like sort of subscription sites or sites that collate all the news for you into one place. Okay. So um, 
what I'm doing, what I'm doing with it is I'm building a picture, right? I'm building um, a theme. I'm trying to understand the theme of where things are going. Like what I mentioned with Euro USD. Okay, now that we are we're seeing the data for the euro is softer. It's going more negative. You look at Forex Factory, you see the reports coming out negative. That means that the currency is probably going to that that inflation is going down. So the central bank can cut the rates, um, right? So there's a theme that's been going on. If you read about, if you read through these sources that I'm talking about, um, trade the news, uh, Benzinga. If you look at these, um, if you look at the news that comes through, or if you read what the analysts are uh, are saying. Um, you'll hear about these, like you can look at reports from JP Morgan and others. Okay. All right. So uh, new chat, what do you have a template of the playbook that's easier to key in data when I back uh, test or forward test? I don't have one. Um, that's a great question. I've had one in the past that I've given out, but I probably need to try to find one or develop one. Okay. All right. So all that thanks. It helps out a lot. It's a complete fix. Okay. I came in. Okay. Yeah. This, this, this meeting will be recorded. Okay. You have a max daily trades per day per week. Okay, so a uh, great question. I have a max daily stop, max weekly stop, and max monthly stop now. Okay, so it's not it's not necessarily an, an amount of trades per day. It's actually a max stop. So if I lose more than this max stop, I'm out. So one day may heat up. I may have like three trades or four or five trades in one day. Five is is, is more. It's if I'm scalping, that's more, but um, I don't limit it to trades. It's more about like my stop. Um, if I see one good trade, like a trade that fits my playbook, if I see 10 of them in one day, I will take them. You know, it's not over trading if you trade your playbook. Okay. But if you just start, you know, if you just, if you take the invented trade, more, many of people are taking the invented trade, the trade that's not in our playbook. That's when you get in trouble. Okay. All right. Where and how do you find such news on uh, central bank? There's many different, as I mentioned, uh, trade the news, look up trade the news. And you'll you can uh, you can take a look there. Um, how to identify a fake out during high volumes? What factors do you uh, recommend to look out for to identify fake outs and scalping? Uh, yeah, again, so scalps for me start off. They have to be in play. In play means that you have some sort of fundamental catalyst. Like if you have an intraday red folder news, that can be fundamental catalyst to help push price in your direction. Um, but you have to already have a theme in mind, right? So if I'm thinking that stocks are bullish, the indices are bullish, I'm in a daily support, four hour support, and the intraday fundamentals for the US come out, red photo come out that supports the bullish buy, then I'm in, uh, I'll get in. So that, that helps out. And identifying fake outs. So what you wanna see is, if you, you wanna see high volume, uh, if you're trading a breakout, you wanna see high volume if there's a breakout of something or like a break of structure with low volume, a lot of times that could constitute a fake out. So I'm looking, I'm looking over here, but I'm reading the um, the chat right here. Okay. So if you have a breakout with low volume, that could be a fake out. If you have a break of structure with low volume, that could be a fake out. You want, you want your price action to match the volume. And that right there is a sign that it's not a fake out. But if you have um, if you have divergence between price action and volume, a lot of times um, that's a sign that there's a fake out there. Okay. All right. So let me, I'm trying to blaze the questions. Let's see uh, for your, your personal, personally, after how many trades? All right. Say 20 trades. And I asked, I asked many professionals about this as well to support my, my view on it. Even when I was just in the SMB event, the risk manager, who's the guy on the risk floor, he's the guy that has to go and talk to a guy that makes 600K a month and tell him, hey, man, you need to stop. <laughs> when he when he, he sees him going down, this guy says 20, 20 setups is a good amount to start uh, going live. And you go live with B risk, right? You go live with B risk. You don't start off with A risk. You go live with B risk and then you go, you bump your risk up, okay? If you missed the, if you missed the replay, uh, if you missed the, the webinar before, the replay, email our support, support at ProfitX Trading. Okay, support at Profit X Trading. All right, you said that you began to rate the tape on Twitter. Do you use this on US 30 and uh, US 100 or just overall? You can use it. You use the futures tape to, yeah, seeing you can use the futures tape. Definitely gonna use it for stocks, but use it for, use the futures tape for NQ, EES, and YM for US 30, NAS 100, and SPX. Yeah, I answered this before. This record. This will be recorded, okay? All right, so 
Um, drop a one in the chat if you want me to continue these types of community uh, webinars. Let me know if you drop a one in the chat if you want me to continue these types. No, you know what? Drop a fire sign in the chat. <laughs> drop a fire sign in the chat if you want me to continue these types, of, these types of webinars. If you enjoyed this webinar, please click the link in the description. I'll be hosting several webinars every month so that I can dive deeper into topics that I discuss on YouTube. Also, I'd like to hear your concerns, your questions. What are your pain points so that I can address them in my YouTube videos as well as I can answer direct questions on the webinars. Uh, we are a trading community. We are a trading pod. My mission for this channel is to bring the professional knowledge to the independent trader like you and I. Thanks for checking out the webinar and supporting the channel.